Hello, check one, two, check one, two. Mic check, mic check.
hello everyone it's been a while and i'm so excited to be back and i'd like to welcome you all to adamson stadium here for the very first game of the california vulcan season as we have psac crossover to uh, crossover play between the california vulcans and the kutztown golden bears my name is john sape and inside me here today is my good friend mr braxton turner braxton how are you today i'm doing good man i am excited here today to see what both of these games, teams can do this season as am i and like i said it's just so nice to be back here on the helm watching the boys play some football you know and ready to have a good time and uh, before we do get started, I know for a fact, uh, actually out there right now, are the team captains for both teams for your Vulcans, Matt Charlton, Dominic Solomon Jr., and Matt Toby, the, uh, the respective candidates for your Vulcans team captains. And last time out that these two teams played, almost a year ago today, all the way over in Kutztown as the Vulcans fell 24 to 19 to the Golden Bears, interception thrown by uh, Noah Mitchell, and then this touchdown, the 42-yard touchdown from Donnie Blaine to Jerome Cap with 6-12 left in the fourth quarter, kind of just sealed the deal for California, unable to make the comeback, and uh, the Vulcans fell once again to the Golden Bears. So California looking for a little bit of revenge here uh, today. Always like we can take a look at the tail of the tape both teams here coming into today's game. The Vulcan stats are going to be from last year because they haven't played yet this year. But for Kutztown, this will be their stats from last week. Here we go. Tail of the tape. Points for, for Cal. 30.8 points against. 19.6 yards for. 37.5. 375.7. Time of possession, 32 minutes and 17 seconds. And penalties a game. Penalties. Oh, yards, I think. is. The, I think that's the, the better way to put it. Yeah, I guess. 1 and 27. And for Kutztown, points for 20. Points against, 31. Yards for 362. Time of possession, 4108. And penalties, 39. Yeah, that seems a bit unfortunate for Kutztown. 41 minutes of possession in their game last week against Assumption. And they fell 31 to 20. And like I said, it is just so good to be back here at Adamson Stadium, ready to see some Vulcans kick off. We're uh, taking away our opportunity last week as the Vulcans game against Alderson Broadus down there in Philippi, West Virginia, got canceled last week. So the Vulcans are the last team, I believe, in the PSAC to uh, kick off this year. And uh, what a better way to do it, you know? Back, back here, ready to go. And, uh, Looks like it's going to be the Golden Bears kicking off here. F uh, the Vulcans offense is going to come out with the first time. And from what I believe, it's going to be a brand new quarterback at the helm. Davis Black, number five, transferring in this year from Charleston, West Virginia. University of Charleston, West Virginia. So good to see. Uh, going to be interesting to see how well he is able to command this offense that was led for the last couple of years by arguably the best quarterback to ever play here at Cal and Noah Mitchell. My, my, my QB1. <laughs> QB1. Yes, for sure. He definitely has some big shoes to fill here at Cal. I guess we'll see how well, as you said, he's able to do this year. Both teams just awaiting. Some finishing touches from the referee. It's going to be for the Vulcans. Amari Hopkins Jr., number nine, back to receive, as well as number 12 Eric Willis of the third kicking off here for the Golden Eagles will or Golden Knight or <laughs> Golden Bears there's so <laughs> many go Golden Bears will be Nate Millard and we are underway here at Adamson Stadium and that ball the kickoff going to go out of, out of bounds so a quick penalty and the Vulcans are going to get excellent field position to start today's game not something you see a whole lot of though is uh the kickoff going out of bounds, especially at this level. Yeah, at this level, guys are a lot better, especially the kickers. A little bit more apt. So I'm sure the Vulcans will take that every day of the week. As the, like I said, the kickoff went out of bounds. We can talk a little bit about the starting lineups here for your Vulcans on offense. And like we said, it's going to be Davis Black um, to take reign of this Vulcan offense. Here at back, we have... Eric McCann, a returning player from last year. And someone the Vulcans are going to rely heavily on shotgun formation. 
First play of the year, handoff to McCann, who's able to break a tackle, but Stuffy kept on going, able to break off a few, and got back to the line of scrimmage, so no gain on the play, but McCann showing a little bit of that strength. Always nice to start out with a run play. Feel how good your uh, defense is on the run. As they, I tell you, runs are hard. Anything past college and high, um, anything past high school, runs are hard to really get at too much yardage there. Yeah, it rely, there's just so many players that it relies on to get it going well. Two wide receivers at the bottom of your screen. Man in motion. Play action pass. Throw caught over on the far side. Breaking a few tackles and brought down just shy of that first Flash down marker is, is to, to Eric Willis, the third. A returning Seven receiver who's going to have to be step up in a big way here for California. But the Vulcans three. going quickly. Third and two. Handoff to Willis. Trying to find that gap. Going to get brought down just shy of that Again, first down marker. So fourth and one. Going to be interesting to see if California marker. elect to go for it here. It's going to bring up a fourth down and one for the Balkans. Looks like Coach Dunn calling over or calling off the offense. And just like that, the Vulcans are going to go three and out to start the year. That last run, not a bad, not a bad game, but just not enough to gain that first down there. Not a bad series to start out a game. Of course, you never want a four, uh, three and out, four and out, but not bad, not a bad series to start a game like this. Well, I would, I wouldn't have been surprised if Coach decided to roll the dice and go for it on the fourth down to start the year, electing to play it safe. Rosen still back to punt here for Cal, back to return for the Golden Bears. There's going to be a flag thrown. Yep, delay of game, and so the Vulcans and elect to go back five yards and maybe give the Golden Bears a little bit more room to uh, receive this punt. You probably do. It's a first game of the season, six. especially for Cat Vulcans right now. You probably do for maybe one of those two, two of those mistakes. Guys coming off the field, not sure. Kind of miscommunications on the sidelines, but let's see if they can work those kinks out later. It's going to be number three, Antoine Lloyd, back to receive here for the Golden Bears. Roden Seals punt going to take bounce towards Lloyd, and Lloyd able to to break free from a couple of Vulcans before being tripped up just shy of that 30-yard line. Good return for the Golden Bears to get themselves some good field positioning after it seems like Lloyd was surrounded by some Vulcans over there. And out will come the Vulcan defense to start the year. A couple of returning faces, but for the large majority, a lot of brand new players on both sides of the ball here. Yeah, for sure. As me and our friend Gooch were looking at the PSAC West and most of the teams in the Pens in the state of Pennsylvania, D2 especially, most teams are kind of rebuilding as the uh, COVID year players are starting to fall out of the season, starting to graduate and whatnot. There's a lot of new players, a lot of freshmen. Yeah, a lot of new players, a lot of new faces, new exciting uh, times as the PSAC overturns. First and 10 for the Golden Bears handoff to Davis McNeil, who's able to break free on that far side and able to work his way past the first down marker. First down on one play, so Is very efficient here from the Golden Bears. That'll be enough for first and down. this It'll offense first and was one last year, one. very, very strong, returning their quarterback, number eight, Donnie Blaine, who uh, gave the Vulcans a decent amount of problems last year. Excuse me. There's going to be a different quarterback in there. Number 18, Judd Novak. In the pistol formation. A lot of movement around the line of scrimmage. Waiting to see which line. side they're going to call this one against. I'm not sure. That's going to be that's maybe a little bit confusing because they threw that flag kind of late. We had offense and defense jump there. Yeah. It looked like both sides were moving. Good sounds pointing the way towards California. That's what they're going to call. Know, get the Vulcans on that infraction uh, infraction around the line. It's going to be, and then against number 40, Josh Miller, one of the returning players on this Vulcan five. defense. First so it'll be first down and From five now here <laughs> for the Golden Bears. Three wide here for Novak. Davis McNeil to his right. Two wide receivers at the bottom of your screen, one at the top. Davis McNeil moving now to Novak's left handoff. Davis McNeil, who gets wrapped up immediately, but able to fall forward and pick up a Davis couple of yards. Say about two or three. 
It's another decent chunk chunk play here for uh, the Golden Eagles or the Golden Bears to start. Gain of two on the play. A great run game can be a deciding factor for many teams. Um, if you can run, a, if passes aren't working, and you can run, if you can run a football, oftentimes that will carry your team to a good victory. And that was something that the Vulcans uh, were better than everyone at last year was stopping the run. Average, I think, less than 60 yards per game allowed on the ground. The passing game was really where the Vulcans struggled to defend. Second and three. Davis McNeil once again on the carry. He's able to bumble forward. Looks like he might be spotted just Is shy the ball of that first down marker. Looks like it's going to be about third and one now the here no for the Golden Bears. The These runs may seem underwhelming, but I can assure you they are not. A good three run is anything down, you can get. And three, little, something as little as three yards is a decent run, as long as you're marching down that field. As long as you can get a first down, that's all you really need. Now we can see why Kutztown was able to take off so much of the clock. Under center, quarterback sneak. And it looks like uh, Novak is going to be able to push his way forward, but the ball came out. There's a fight for it, but looks like play is going to be called dead. Keeper, it's going to be a first, first down, down here for the Golden Bears. Phoebe Sneak uh, sometimes can always be a risky player there as he was caught up cut up tall, which is something you never really want your ball carriers to do. It e makes it easier to, uh, for the defense to strip the ball. And I feel like if you're just able to get a, a good push behind your quarterback there, it's always going to be very hard to defend that quarterback sneak. Pistol formation here for the Golden Bears. Two wide receivers on the bottom of your screen, one at the top. Handoff once again to Davis McNeil. He's able to break free and able to bounce his way to the outside. McNeil past the 30 and pushed out of bounds at around the 25-yard line. Davis McNeil again, the ball carrier. Cuts down going back to back with the runs. Uh, they're able to break up for a decent, and decent gain of yards there. Another big run. It's going to be spotted down. at the 27-yard line. So a 20-yard gain on that run. There for, uh, for Davis McNeil, who's been starting off this game very strong. Obviously, a big game plan here for, for Kutztown is to feed the rock to Dale Davis McNeil. And he's been able to uh, give the Vulcans all sorts of problems. Need to make a couple of adjustments. Wide receiver in motion all the way to the far side. Play action pass. Novak back to throw. Going deep towards the end zone. Touchdown. Able to find the back corner of the end zone. That one was number 15, Sincere Thomas. And just like that, the Golden Bears able to strike first in this game. Man, great, great eyes there by Blaine. Able to thread that needle. As, a, as a, That last play there, I believe, California went to a zone, which they've been manning up that entire time. So the only time that they switch to a uh, zone is when off of a touchdown pass, which is unfortunate. And just like that, the Golden Bears strike first. And like you said, that's what happens when you're able to set up the run like that. Extra point attempt is up, and it is good from from Nate Miller or uh, from Dawson Evitz. 9-1 left here in the first quarter. Kutztown 7, California nothing. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right, right back here on uh, CUTV. CUTV Sports 1, the PSAC Network, and 91.9 FM WCAL. A new season of Vulcan football is set to begin September 9th versus Kutztown. September 16th versus Shepherd. September 23rd at Edinburgh. September 30 versus Clarion. October 7th at IUP. Homecoming October 14th versus Seton Hill. October 21st at Slippery Rock. October 28th versus Mercyhurst. November 4th at Gannon. November 11th at East Stroudsburg. All games available on CUTV Sports 1 and the PSAC Digital Network. Welcome back to Adamson Stadium, where Kutztown have a quick 7-0 lead, 9-1 left here in the first quarter. Kickoff underway. Will be fielded inside the end zone. Looks like the Vulcans are going to take a touchback. 
And like we talked about, good offensive possession last time out for Kutztown, just able to drive the ball down the field and uh, able to strike first. Yeah, Kutztown able to play their cards right. Made, ran the ball a few times in a row, made the Vulcans worry about a run, and then they at last second threw a pass play, caught both the deep, caught both the defense and defensive line and defensive backs off guard. Yeah, when you're able to run like that, uh, it sets up the play action so well. And they were able to utilize, utilize it to great effect. The Vulcans went three and out to start. Looking to pick up some more yardage and maybe get a score of their own ba black in the backfield. Hand off to McCann. McCann able to break away from one tackler before being spun down Again, the for a game of about three on the play. Tyler Wary on the stop. Gain of three on the play, second down and And that's the team last year in California that was uh, not very reliant on the run game, very pass-heavy offense with with no Mitchell back there at the helm and then a couple of great, great wide receivers, especially in Jaquay Jackson, who is now currently playing his football at the University of Rutgers. Four wide receivers out here for the Vulcans. Black takes a snap, looking now rolling to his left out of the pocket, under a bit of pressure. Just going to throw that one away. Had a couple of players in the air, one of them being former cornerback, now turned wide receiver here for the Vulcans, Noah Hamlin. It's going to bring down a third and seven here for Cal. And as you were saying earlier about Vulcans not being worried, worry relying on a run game, as with any new player, quarterbacks, especially quarterbacks, you have to tailor to their strengths. Um, tailor, because er not every player is the same, so I guess we'll see how they're able to adjust this season. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how Black is able to adjust to this offense. Third and seven for Cal. Black back to pass. Firing inside and caught. Just past the first down marker, and the Vulcans pick up their first down of the season. It's going to be blessed on the reception, and the Vulcan first down. Great eyes there by Black, recognizing his zone. And kind of having, kind of having to thread the needle, too. With zone defense, you kind of have to find the spot versus man. You just find the open man and try to place it. It's all about timing. And Blessed shut off the cannon there a little bit, able to just zip that one in. There's a bunch on the far side, two on the near. Man in motion. Takes the handoff to McCann, throws it over to Blessed again, who gets rocked. Oh, my God. In the backfield for a loss of a couple. That's a big hit for the Golden Bears, I believe. Drew Henser on the stop. 23, Drew Number Henser. Drew Henser blew him up. That's a, that's a risky thing about screens. You always have to watch. If someone, if a defensive back or any defensive player notices a, a screen like that, generally it's not going to go too great. And that time Henser sniffed that one out from a mile away. Was able to get over and recover. Second and 12 now here for the Vulcans. Two wide receivers on the far side, one in the near. Kalechi in the backfield at tight end. Handoff to McCann on the reverse, able to get through. Nice cut up the middle, and McCann has a ton of room. McCann at the 30, gets a block, and McCann going to pull out the red carpet into the end zone. Touchdown, Vulcans. Woo! Great Great eyes. start. Great eyes there by McCann, able to cut back up and in for the touchdown. McCann just showing off the vision and showing off the juke shoes as well, able to cut back and just burst up the middle. And like I said, this this run game was not the Vulcan speciality. And so far this game have sh shown it off pretty strongly as McCann takes it all the way to the house for the touchdown. Beatco, it's gonna be Beatco back, back to kicker for the Vulcans, one of the best kickers in the conference. And also, it's just one of the best in school history. Yeah. Beatco's yeah. kick is up. And his kick is good. 6.48 left to go here in the first quarter. Game tied 7-7. Seven to seven. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back here on CTV. CTV Sports 1, the PSAC Network, and 91.9 FM, WCAL, the Vulcan Sports Radio Network. Suffering from World Cup withdrawal? Well, Vulcan men's and women's soccer has you covered. Come up and watch the region's best soccer teams do battle in a combined 18 home games at the beautiful Phillipsburg Soccer Complex. In addition, three men's and three women's home games will be featured live on CUTV Sports 1 and the PSAC Digital Network. Follow Cal Vulcans for up-to-date information on all things Vulcan soccer.
Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Adamson Stadium. Your score, California 7, Kutztown 7. And the Vulcans answer back after a 65-yard touchdown run from Eric McCann III to tie things up here. Eric McCann, the returning vet, showing why he still has a starting spot. You know, four rushes for 70 yards and a touchdown to boot. The Vulcans able to answer back. And Kutztown with a good offensive drive of their own to start things off. So the Vulcans' defense... Looking to adjust, Beko back to kick here for the Vulcans. Ball going to be received at about the one yard line from uh, Curtis Ravenel Jr. Who's going to get rocked, but able to break free. Breaks off with more tackles. Unreal from Ravenel Jr. Has kept going, took hit after hit. And gets pushed out just shy of the 30 yard line. Man, you know what they call them players that they keep, you can't wrap up? They call them refrigerators. <laughs> <laughs> and the, I mean, he was showing it off there. The pits were just bouncing off of him, looking First like Derrick Henry just breaking off every hit known to man. Ball's going to be placed at the 28 yard line here for the Golden Bears to start their, uh, their drive off. And the Vulcans offense showing, uh, showing off some good signs of life here. And, uh, with that nice run and now it's time for the defense to um, to stick to their uh, their their side of the ball to try and get uh, and get the the Golden Bears off the field here. First and ten now from the 28 yard line. Novak coming back in motion, handoff once again. It's going to be Davis and McNeil on another run. Davis McNeil to fall forward to pick up about three on the carry. Cuts down again, going back to that run. They can gain, keep Terrible gaining three yards. I don't, I can't imagine, each run play, I can't imagine them stopping anytime soon. Yeah, the Vulcans so far not committing Second a ton down, into seven. the box because last time we saw what happened, and they got beat on the back end. I mean, a bunch tight formation on that far side. One wide receiver on the near. Davis McNeil, two Novaks right. Novak pointing out some of the defensive movements there for the Vulcans. Just under six minutes left to play here in the first quarter. Novak with a snap handoff once again to Davis and McNeil. And McNeil able to find the hole and falls forward. Davis picks up McNeil a couple more. Brought down about a yard shy of the first down. Cuts down right now. You can see like are sticking with like a power type run game. Um, only thing I, I'm not sure there's much you can do other than hope your players can get around it and recognize it early and often. You know, cuts down so far, just down trying to uh, just trying to run you into the ground, just try to grind you down. The war of attrition style, where they're going to keep the ball for as long as possible, make you work for it. By the time they tire you out, they'll be three scores ahead. Third down and two. Man in motion, handoff again to Davis McNeil, and McNeil able to break a tackle and able to bounce his way to the outside. Kind of got tripped up, but looked like he was spinning around and gets brought down at the 43-yard line. That's enough for a first down. Caraballo on the stop. That's enough for a Golden Bears first down. First and 10 from the 43. It looks like as he was making his way to that outside, lost his footing and tried to spin around to avoid the hit. Picked up about seven on the play. So first and 10 now for the Golden Bears from their own 43. Man, if this continues, running backs are going to see a lot of Running back, McNeil's going to see a lot of, a lot of snaps. A lot of snaps for him. Novak in the backfield. Three wide receivers to the near side. Play action pass. Screen to the near side. It's going to be caught and brought down. That's going to be Ravenel Jr. again. It's going to be brought down Ravenel after a gain of about nine. Catch. Second and one now here Not for the Golden Eagles. Now in Vulcan territory. And Kutztown's offensive coordinator, play. offensive team doing an excellent one. job, I'd say, of mixing in plays here and there. Screenplay on that screenplay on the last, as you can see, Vulcans just weren't even expecting it. I keep saying Golden Eagles. I keep catching myself <laughs> saying it. They are the Golden Bears. They're just too many Golden something yep. in the PSAC, <laughs> and it's hard to keep track of. They are the Golden Bears, and they have the ball on the Vulcan 48-yard line, second and one. Novak looking over towards the sideline. Stewart in the backfield now here for the Golden Bears. Said it right that time. Hand off to Stewart. Stewart able to break forward and pushes his way past the first down marker. Able to pick up a few more. New set of chains now here for the Golden Bears. Brought down by Hill and Siegel. That'll be enough for a first down. First and ten Golden Bears from the 45. And so far the Vulcans just haven't had an answer. And 
that's the problem whenever you, you allow a team to establish this run game early is you are just so scared to commit so many bodies into the box because of what happened last time on that last offensive possession. Because once you did, they would just get behind you on that screen or on that uh, play action pass and score the touchdown. Where one team, one side fails, whether it be defensive line or defensive back, usually puts stress on the other. Man in motion to the near side. Handoff again. Be good run that time from Davis McNeil. Able to burst forward into the second level and picks up another Davis first McNeil down for the Golden Bears. So about, be brought down at the 28 yard line, 17 yard gain. When you're running an offensive set like Kutztown is right now, Wilkins' defensive line, if they don't get him at the line, there's not much you can do. And I, at this point, it's really all in your linebackers. And if you linebackers are in the middle ch somewhere trying to decide whether it's a pass or not sure whether it's a pass or a run play, you get outcomes like that. Yeah, eight rushes for 67 yards so far in the game for Davis McNeil. First and 10 from the 28. No back, back to pass, throwing towards the near side, caught. And kind of stumbling is Ravenel Jr. again. Going to get brought down Ravenel after a pickup of a few. A flag thrown in the There's backfield. A flag on the play. So waiting to see this one is who this one is going to be on. It's going to be a roughing the passer call against the Vulcans. And just when you think they're able to get a, a good stop on first down, limiting the gain. There, uh, it's going to be a penalty thrown against them, so that's going to be tacked on even after the two-yard reception from Ravenel Jr., and First that's going to push Golden the Golden the Bears 13. to the Vulcan 13-yard line. And they're not, <laughs> that man, not the smartest play. Cut giving cuts down uh, even better field position, and then, as you said, roughing the pass, just tacked on to the end of the run, so. And just some, it just seems like when you get a good stop, Everything bad is going your way for this Vulcan defense so far. Man in motion to the far side. First and 10 from the 13. Wait. No back, back to pass. Gets under a ton of pressure and has to throw that one out of play. Is incomplete. And you see the, Vul uh, the Vulcan coaches are in the booth to our right. And they're a little bit upset about that. I think they thought that, that maybe probably should have been intentional grounding. Maybe. I think it made, it way, I think it made its way past the line of scrimmage, but... Yeah, I'm not sure whether whether they for sure the referee thought he was outside the pocket or if the lineman line judge thought he was ball got passed. Well, I know you know all about it because me, JJ, and Nate last night came and watched you referee my high school game, Best Center versus uh, Port Cherry last night. So we know you're all caught up on the rule board. <laughs> Second and ten, handoff once again to Davis and McNeil who was able to work Davis his way McNeil through the line there. and pick up about six on the play. Another good run here from this Kutztown offense. And a lot the of these runs are just dependent on the running back. On the Defense there, as you saw, shifted shifted pretty well with the, throughout the run, but uh, was able to cut back and uh, get a nice run out of it. And I do want to give uh, this yeah. offensive line their flowers too yeah. because a lot of the times they go a little bit unnoticed, but the passing, uh, the passing, uh, Blocking hasn't been the greatest so far. The Vulcans were able to, to pressure off Novak a few times, but on the run, they've been lights out so far. Third and five now for the Golden Bears from the Vulcan eight-yard line. Novak in the shotgun. Looking to his right, under a ton of pressure, scrambling, firing, broken up by Dominic Solomon Jr. at the goal line. Good defense of the Vulcans. Bending but not breaking. Going to force a fourth a down fourth inside down of uh, in, inside of their red zone, and it looks like the kicking unit going to make its way onto the field for the Golden Bears. And a great defensive stop there by the Vulcans, able to keep them at least to a field goal. Dawson Evans and just like that, the Vulcans going to come out or going to come off the field, not allowing a touchdown. So good, good defense. And that time by Dominic Solomon Jr. able to break it up. It's going to be Dawson Evitz back to kick here for the Golden Bears. Evitz kick is up. Kick is up. And Evitz kick 
nearly hits the cameraman in <laughs> and on the crane behind the uh, behind the goalpost. His kick is good. Your score could sound 10. California 7. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back here on CTV. CTV Sports 1, the PSAC Network, and 91.9 FM WCAL. Vulcan Volleyball is back, and you can have the best seat in the house. The Convocation Center will be rocking with 11 home games featuring some of the best teams in the region and the PSAC. All home games will be streamed live on CUTV Sports 1 and the PSAC Digital Network. Follow Cal Vulcans on all social media platforms for up-to-date schedules and information. Vulcan Volleyball and you, a winning combination. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Adamson Stadium as the Vulcans find themselves trailing to the Kutztown Golden Bears 7 to 10. Good drive from the Kutztown offense, but the Vulcans able to hold them with three points. Kick underway. Once again, going to be fielded into the end zone for a touchback. Goes into the end zone so now for California have their chance the first to take their first lead of the, the game. And after that last offensive possession, Things are looking up here for California. Oh yeah, for sure. McCann's for a Vulcan scoring on that on their last touchdown. See if able if uh, the Vulcans will mix in a little bit more pass plays or continue to go back to the run. Yeah, either way, it's an exciting time for all these t both teams here. Uh, last year, this Vulcans offense, like you said, a lot of the teams in the PSAC kind of just shifting the guard in terms of how many new players are on the team. I believe last year, over a dozen seniors on this Vulcan team, both on the offense and defensive sides, mm. graduated, and that didn't even include a couple of players transferring away to different schools. So a bunch of fresh faces on this Vulcan team. First down, handoff to McCann, flag thrown, and play. looks like it's going to be a false start against the Vulcans. This one's going to go against Eric Willis, the third wide receiver. Just got a little bit too antsy. Yeah. False start. It's oh, it's it's really easy to do. And back the Vulcans up to their own twenty. First and fifteen now. Twenty-four point four seconds left in the first quarter of play. Black hands it off to McCann. McCann. Trying to work his way to the outside. Runs into a wall Can the ball carrier. of Bears and going to get brought down at about the line of scrimmage. I think the Vulcans are just going to let this time run out. No gain on a play. So that's exactly what they're 15. going to do as they're waving their players off the field. So that that'll the be the end of the first quarter of play of the California Vulcan seasons. They trail 10 to, se 10 to 7 to the Kutztown Golden Bears. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back for quarter number two here at Adamson Stadium on CUTV, CUTV Sports 1, the PSAC Network, and 91.9 FM WCAL, the Vulcan Sports Radio Network. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Adamson Stadium as we begin quarter number two between Kutztown and California. The Vulcans trailing 10 to 7, but their offense back on the field to start the second quarter. It's going to be second and 15 here for California. Four wide for the Vulcans. 
Three on the near side, one on the far. Black catches, gets, gets the snap and the throw kind of low and away, but Willis and able to come down with the catch, but he's going to be down Willis immediately. It's going to be a loss of about one, so a third and very long here for California. Guess we'll see what California decides to do here. I'm assuming some type of deep pass. Three on the far side for California. McCann in the backfield next to Black. It's going to be D.A.V. Johnson. On the near side. Black gets the snap. Looking to his left. Firing deep down the middle of the field. His pass is caught. Even Ooh, after the big hit. Actually, he's going to drop it. Trying to find Amari Hopkins in the middle of the field. Nearly had him, but good defense from the Golden Bears able to light up Hopkins and force the incompletion. Man, I thought for sure he had that would have been an excellent catch, but man, he got drilled in the back. It's, I mean, that <laughs> makes it for sure easy to drop that. Yes, good pass that time from Black. Able to just fire it in there, but Hopkins unable to hold on. That's going to bring Rosensteel back out onto the field. He's stationed at around the Vulcan 10-yard line. Be Lloyd back to receive Rosenstiel's punt fielded at the 35. Lloyd working his way towards the outside gets a couple of blocks. Lloyd cuts back into the middle of the field breaking a few tackles and Lloyd brought down inside of Vulcan territory but a few flags thrown in and around the midfield there line. Flag on a play. And all the way back at the 40 the umpire is saying even if this one gets called back. It's plays like that that kind of jumpstart your team. Nice electric return, even though I think this one, I think he said it's going to get called back. Yeah. Waiting to see the official call from the referee. During the return, illegal blindside block. The five return team. Illegal blindside block. Going to go against number five, Justin Harris for Kutztown. So this... Is going to bring the ball all the way back to the 25. That'll bring up a first down and yeah, 10. I, I saw it. I wasn't sure if they were, if the rest were going to call it or if there was something different, a different uh, thing they had for punt returns. But he came back and cleaned his block. I'm not sure exactly which, uh, I forget which number it was, but my goodness. And the Vulcan, we can take a look at the preseason PSAC West polls. The Vulcans pegged to finish third. They finished fourth last season behind IUP, Slip, and Gannon, but the Vulcans Lifted to finish third this year. IUP slip Cal Gannon, Edinburgh, Seton Hill, Clarion, and Mercyhurst. The order of the preseason polls. So California has some lofty expectations to hit this year. And so far, keeping themselves in a game good enough to maybe meet those expectations. First and 10 from the 25-yard line. Novak hands it off to Williams this time. Williams gets hit but still able to keep going. Third Bounces forward for a pickup of about three. Down by Matt Toby. Of three Toby on the, on the tackle and, down and one of the seven. returning members of this Vulcan defense and one of the key pieces last year, Matt Toby, the linebacker here for California, was just all over the field last year making all sorts of plays, not only getting back there, getting to the quarterback, but also just blowing up run plays, special teams, blocking punches. Matt Toby was doing it all last year. And he's back captaining the Vulcan team here once again this year. Second and seven now from the 28. Handoff once again for the Golden Bears. A fight forward. It's going to be brought down around the 30-yard line. The Pick up of about three or two or three on the play. Stewart once again on the carry. On so the third and five now here for the Golden Bears. Gain of two. It's third down. It's be a good chance for California to get their defense off the field. Three ri wide receivers on the near side. I cannot talk today. <laughs> three wide receivers on the near side. One on the far. Davis McNeil in the backfield. Ten left on the play clock. Novak in the shotgun. Back to pass. Novak under a ton of pressure. Scrambling and rolling to his right. And Novak going to get pushed out. Out of bounds. And that's going to go down as a sack. 
And that was Josh Miller on the play, making the play, Those forcing a fourth down, down, and the Vulcans the able to get the defense off the field. Down by Josh Miller. Man, the Vulcans defensive line coming up there big and forcing, well, laying out of the pocket the there. Great sack. And like I said, it, this Kutztown offensive line on the runs have been great, but on the passing plays, it seems like every time Novak is back to pass, he's always under a ton of pressure, and that time the Vulcans finally able to get to him. Kutztown punt, Willis back to receive, catches it at around his 30, trying to get to the outside corner, just trying to break it around. And he's going to get brought down for a few yard loss. It's going to be first and 10 for California from their own 28 yard line. And I believe that was number 46, or was that 47? I think it was 47, Kate Clancy huh? there in that tackle. Yeah, good, good closing speed by the linebacker, able to bring down Willis a third who is uh is not uh, the slowest guy himself very fast wide receiver so good job by him on the special teams play out there for the golden bears first and 10 now for cal from their own 28 1207 left to play here in the first half it's going to be kalechi on the left of black mccann on his right black back to pass firing deep down the right hand side Pass is going to be incomplete. Trying to find DeMonte Martin on this far there side. Is, there is a flag on the play. There's going to be a flag thrown on the play. Flag thrown on the far side around the 26-yard line. It looks like near the Kutztown side of the field. It's going to be an encroachment penalty going against... Uh, the Golden Bears, and yeah, I think uh, maybe that was a smart play then, as it looked like it was uh, it was Martin just trying to go down the sideline, and Vulcans had a free play and just tried to capitalize on it. Yeah. Man, I'm not quite sure what really happened still. First down and five now from the 33. Black hands it off to Williams. Williams, nice cut, able to break away from a defender and falls forward. Around the 39-yard line, and that's going to be enough for a first down. We've seen a ton of McCann so far. This is the first time we've seen Devontae Williams, who another running back back for uh, the Vulcans offense this season. Yeah, great cut back there by Williams. A little bit shifty there. He got down low, so it looked like he could have gotten taken out in the backfield, but able to break free and able to pick up the first down for the California. First and 10 now from the 39. Another pistol-type formation here for California. Kalachi in motion. Hand off to Williams again. Williams is trying to find an angle. He's going to get mauled again, by a pack here. of Golden Bears in the backfield. No the Looks like the forward prior is going to get him back to the line of scrimmage, but nothing more. Second down and 10 here for Cal. Davis and Bowles on Each the time you run a... You have a run. You're probably due for a couple of those. There's no guarantee where you will gain any yardage. Back to the uh, back to the line of scrimmage is better than a loss. I mean, you have to expect that for a few good runs. Yep. Then they'll fall back to the means of progression. Maybe line of scrimmage lose a few, but second town and ten now here for Cal Davis Black in the backfield in the shotgun, looking now to pass. Quick pass is going to be intercepted at the 45, trying to find Williams, and that one just goes right over his head, and that's going to be picked off by Jalen DeVos of the Golden Bears. And costly turnover here for Cal is it's going to give the Golden Bears such a good field position to start that's their next drive. Yeah, that was a good yeah, interception, good, good hands there, too. Touchdown. Touchdown. Uh, man, First and 10 Golden Bears from up. the 45. It was DeVos able to bring it down, number six, for the Golden Bears. And Black, that time, it looked like it just got away from him a little bit, was trying to make the check down pass to Williams, and yeah. that he one just sailed a little bit too far over his head. Yeah, he hit. He was hit as he, throw, he, was, he was throwing it, so that definitely will throw off a Q QB's accuracy. He threw him off a little bit. Unfortunate start here for California. 10.26 left to go here in the first half. Kutztown with the ball on the Vulcan 45, have a chance to take a commanding lead of this game. Novak in the backfield, man in motion to the 
left side. Fakes the screen and the man wide open on the on the near side. Breaks one tackle and brought down inside the 20. That's number 15, Cecir Thomas, Thomas with another reception. And now inside of the Vulcan red zone. Up for first down, first and 10 from the 19. That's now something the Vulcans have to be wary of. We've seen the screen pass a few times yep. here from Kutztown. And now they bust out the fake screen. Thomas uh, busts up on his left side and able to pick up a, a good chunk of yardage. Kind of a miscommunication there as well as kind of just snuck in behind the defense down the sideline. Loban able to make the tackle here for California. Whistle blown. I think it's going to be Kutztown taking a timeout. That's their first of the half. And then I'll stop the clock with 9.40 left to go here in the first half. We can take a minute. We can take a look at some replays here from this game so far. When we look at that, we can also just talk about just kind of the dynamics of the game. The, the Vulcans seem to maybe be picking up a little bit m of momentum after after the touchdown and only holding the Kutztown offense to three points on their next possession. But the interception is yet to be seen, but maybe uh, kind of just taking the, the wind out of the wings of the Vulcans. Yeah. I say anytime you have a play this big, especially giving them fake, great, well, excuse me, great field goal, not even field goal, field position, it kind of puts a lot of pressure on your defense and then forces them to uh, play a lot more aggressive than they would normally. I guess we'll see if they're able to come through here. Yeah, we saw them bend but not break last time. Let's see if they can hold strong once again. It's going to be Novak under center. Davis McNeil catches the toss. And able to find a hole Davis and work his way up through it. There. Picks up about four on the carry. Another good run on first down here for Kutztown. And Silva on the stop. Gain of three. Second down and seven. Again, it is. I can now fully understand why. Kutztown had 41 minutes of a possession in their game against Assumption last week because they have been running the ball, running this clock so well. Novak under center again, man in motion, fakes the handoff. Novak scrambling to his left, just going to keep it and going to get ran out of bounds at around the 15-yard line, going to pick up here. about one or two on the play, a third and five now here for Kutztown. The Vulcans the defensive line right now has been great giving it's it pressure wise down. forcing playing out of the pocket and forcing him to scramble yeah it's been hard for Novak to um, to get anything going three for five so far but it seems like every time he has he has the ball and is trying to make a throw he seems to always be under a ton of pressure and hasn't been different yet third and five now for cuts down three receivers on the far side one on the near Davis McNeil in the backfield. Novak back to pass, looking, firing to his left. Pass into the end zone, incomplete, trying to find Hasty on this near side. And Hasty trying to show the referee that his jersey was all sorts of pulled. No flag thrown, and that's going to bring out the field goal unit once again. So the Vulcans defense kind of bails out the offense a little bit, doesn't give up the touchdown, able to hold up, uh, cuts down to a field goal here. Great series there by the defense. Able to keep them out of the end zone, and I'll tell you, that is not an easy job. Abbott's back to back for another field goal. Snap, kick up, and he kick is good. And Your good. score, 13 to seven. Now 8-10 left to go here in the second quarter. We're gonna take a quick break. We'll be right back here on CTV. CTV Sports 1, the PSAC Network, and 91.9 FM.
Hello everyone and welcome back to Adams and Stadium as the Coatstown Golden Bears have a 13-7 lead over the California Vulcans. The last time the Vulcans offense was out, Black threw an interception, but the Vulcan defense able to hold Coatstown to only a field goal, even though they had the ball well within Vulcan territory. Kickoff going to be fielded just inside of the end zone for another touchback. So now this is the California's chance to strike here. 8-10 left. Plenty of time to just try to relax, run your offense the way that you want it, and just try to get any sort of momentum going on the offensive side because it so far it has been all Kutztown. Nine first downs so far in this first half for Kutztown compared to the Vulcans' three, which they only got on that, on that touchdown possession. Vulcans right now defense uh, is d they're doing their job has kept um, Kutztown in both both series in two series to a field goal only right now you're hoping your offense can uh, pull their weight first and ten from the 25 fakes the handoff to Williams black under a ton of pressure just trying to lob it away and throws it out of bounds Willis in the area second down and, and bring up a second and ten so both teams passing the ball wise have not been able to uh, to really find that momentum just any find any string of passes together yeah. it seems like every time that both are back to pass um, uh, black and um, black and Novak it seems like they're under a ton of pressure yeah football game as I say is a game of chess you never really know what the team is doing what the defense or offense is doing so it kind of works second and ten handoff to Williams and Williams Unable to break the tackle. Going to get brought down around the line of scrimmage. That's going to be Freddie Redder no the in the backfield. Able to bring him down. down it's going to bring up a third and ten. ten once again here for Cal. So much of this game is off of play recognition. Last play, um, defensive defense. Notice it was a bootleg. Shut that play down there. Run didn't go anywhere. So I guess uh, how we'll see how this game goes from here as these teams uh, continue to battle. Yeah, even though California didn't play last week, the Kutztown did a ton of homework. Third and ten, Black stepping up in the pocket under a ton of pressure and is just going to take off with it. Going to get brought down out of after the picking up about five, play. but nowhere near enough in for a first down. So it's going to be another three and out for Cal. Fourth down and five now as Rosenstein and the punting unit are going to make their way back out on the field. That'll bring up a fourth down and five. Getting shut down like like this offensively is uh, never really fun, and I can tell you right now, I bet I bet you're hearing it from both uh, hearing from the defensive players. They're yelling at uh, the offensive. Rosenstiel with a low punt and gets hit as he's punting it as well. Wasn't the best off the leg, but going to take a friendly roll and going to get fielded inside of the Golden Bears 20 yard line at around the 19 so ends up being a good punt so if we have a second we can take a look at the PSAC schedule a full slate of games here today very of uh, some very fun PSAC action cuts down to Cal kicked off at noon obviously if you're watching this game and also a few more noon games Gannon at Millersville Shepard at Edinburgh and Shippensburg at Seton Hill 1 o'clock kickoff Bloom at Clarion and then at 4 o'clock, IUP at East Stroudsburg. And then at 6 o'clock, Slippery Rock at Westchester. And Mercyhurst at Lock Haven. So it's going to be a fun kickoff to some in-conference play here today. A couple crossover games. I think all of them, actually. Crossover games between the East and the West. Getting at least one out of the way early. First and 10 now for the Golden Bears. Handoff to Stewart, or to... Uh, to Davis, Davis McNeil, McNeil was able to pick up about one. Gage Hill on the stop. McNeil having a pretty good game nine. so far. Uh, earlier in the uh, in the first quarter alone, McNeil rushing for 72 yards. Part in part by thanks by the offensive line, of course. But of course, there's always some work you have to do yourself. And McNeil at <laughs> 72 yards in the first quarter alone. Yeah, the workload has been. Uh, has been heavy on him. Trips on the near side for Kutztown. McNeil in the backfield. Quick pass over. 
Another screen, and this time pass is complete. This, <coughs> this time to Hasty. Hasty going to run out of bounds just shy of that first down marker. Third down and one now for the Golden Bears offense. Out of bounds at the 28-yard line. It's third down. Third and one now, both teams switching out some personnel. And we saw the, the quarterback sneak earlier on in the game uh, from Novak, but this time Novak gonna be lining up in the shotgun. Hands off to Davis McNeil again, who's gonna fall forward and pick up the first down. A couple of flags thrown there is a flag in on the, the flag. secondary of California. <laughs> If you're the Vulcans, I don't think that's a very good sign. And the referee signaling California's way. Now waiting to see the official call. Substitution on the defense. Too many men on the field for California. Twelve men on the field. Kutztown going to decline the penalty as they had already picked up the first down. So it'll be first and 10 now from the 33. Five fourteen and running here in the second quarter. Vulcans need to get a stop here because they allow Kutztown to score. Kutztown gets the ball back to start the second half. Hand off to Davis McNeil again, but this time the Vulcans are finally able to get him Mr. down McNeil in the, the backfield, a loss of one on the play. See right now, I... Adventure on the stop. Starting to notice a trend whenever they bring loss in... Loss of a yard on a play. Gino can tag me tight end for Kutztown. <laughs> Excuse me. Anyway, they're starting to run, they're running power there. And maybe, like you said, they, the d the game is all about uh, play recognition, and maybe the Vulcans are able to have been able to crack a couple of the codes to who's going out there for Kutztown and what plays they'll be running. Second and eleven now from the thirty-two. Four oh eight left to play. Flags thrown all Flag around the in the backfield. This one's going to be a false start against Kutztown. Number seventy-two for them, Trey Bernstein. Gonna get called for the false start. That'll one of the first penalties on this Kutztown offense. So they'll bring up second and seventeen or seven uh, second and sixteen, excuse me, for Kutztown from their own twenty-seven. Man, five yards may not seem like a lot, but I can assure you, when you have a game as good, yeah, that's competitive and defense that is competitive, it is a lot. And yeah, when your offense is on a roll like that too, uh, a penalty like that can kind of just really kill a drive. 3.44 and going. Second 16. Pass completed on the near side and ran out Thomas of bounds. That's going to be Thomas on the grab knocked and he's going to be knocked out of bounds. Right yeah, around the original line of scrimmage. Play. Gain of six. So it's going to be third and ten it's from the 33 down. yard line. line to get is the 43 yard line of Kutztown third and ten Novak in the shotgun three receivers on the far side gonna have Ravenel jr. on the near side the Vulcans four-man rush pass incomplete pass on that is. far incomplete. side Right around the sticks, trying to find Mecky Gibson, Gibson in and around the That'll sticks, but that one just too far and away from him to pull in. Great, great, great defensive look that drive there by the Vulcans, able to uh, shut down Kutztown and great, uh, great discipline to not go off sides either on that false start. Solomon Jr. in and around the area on that incompletion. That'll bring up a fourth and ten, and that will bring out. I mean, Nate Millard for the punt. Willis fields it at his 26-yard line. 
You know, break up field, it breaks a few tackles. Good punt return Willis from Willis. And they get pushed out at the 41 yard line. So the Vulcans have the ball at their own 41. Good field position with 2.48 left to play here in the first half. All three timeouts. Chance for the Vulcans to, uh, to, to get themselves out of this hole. I'd imagine Vulcans here will run a uh, hurry up offense. That is, if they decide to try to uh, use the least amount of timeouts as they possibly can and extend this drive. I mean, they got the timeouts. I expect they'll use them, but they don't have a ton of time to play around with. Yep. So first and 10 from the 41. Black back to pass, firing to the left side, caught. And Willis breaks one tackle and tries to run away, but it gets spun down after a gain of about four on the play. And like you said, it looks like the Vulcans, not really in the hurry up, hurry up offense yet, but are going no huddle. Four, four, uh, three wide receivers here for Cal. McCann in the backfield next to Black. Black gets the snap, dropping back. Now scrambling out to his right. Has a ton of time, Black, but doesn't have anyone down the field. He's gonna just try to take it out on his own. Gonna get brought down out of bounds at the line of scrimmage by Heil. So it's gonna be third down and six now here for Cal. And right now I'm surprised Vulcans have, have yet to burn it timeout. That did not stop the clock there. Yeah, that's no, look, a couple of rule changes in the NCAA. Clock doesn't stop on a, on a couple of different things. Low snap of Black able to pull it in. And Black just going to take off with it. Able to break one tackle, but it's brought down short again. And Coach Dunn on the field, not happy about what has happened. And Kutztown are going to take a timeout. Fourth down and four now. And Kutztown right, rightly going to take a timeout. That'll stop the clock with 131 left. Kutztown will have one timeout when they get the they get the ball back, so they have plenty of time to try to march their way back down the field and score a touchdown. Yeah. Man, that, that this last this position here by the Vulcans offensively kind of just scrambled. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, they really wanted to uh, let's say cared about stopping the clock there because there was a few opportunities where they had to just run out of bounds and give them some time to uh, stop and think. Yeah, and I think Coach Dunn not happy about that last play because the snap just rolled on the ground, but Black able to pick it up, and it's just a broken, broken play at that point. Just try to take off and pick up as many yards as possible, but brought down four yards shy, fourth and four now from the Vulcan 47. I mean, the Kutztown still have a ton of time to work with in this first half. Lloyd back to receive. It's going to be Rosen still back to punt. And so far, the Kutztown defense has had the Vulcans number. They've been able to just crack the code so far. California have not found any sort of success beside the one long running play from McCann. This Rosensteel's punt. Going to be a good one fielded at the five-yard line. Lloyd able to break one tackle before getting forced out of bounds Anton at their Lloyd own 12-yard line. So 122 left to play in the first half. Kutztown going to have to go I'm going to have to go the distance of this field here Perfect if they want to score a touchdown. Well. Not a whole ton of time to do it, but they do have one timeout. I guess we'll see how bad Kutztown wants to score. As you said, only one timeout left, and this will either require a lot of plays out of bounds or a lot of uh, no huddle offense, a lot of t good, good time management. And I think even then, I'm, I'm sure they'd be happy with a field goal. If they're able to go in the half 16-7, to seven, they get the ball back to start the second half. They'd be well in the driver's seat. Right now, Vulcans should definitely expect uh, nothing but pass plays this drive. No back, back to pass. Under a ton of pressure rolling and able to break away from a Vulcan defender. <coughs> able to complete his pass to Hasty. Hasty isn't able to get out of bounds. Picks up about seven, but Novak... On and the Kutztown offense second down and four. going into the no huddle. Second and four. No back back to pass. Quick throw. Caught by Hasty again. And Hasty <coughs> is able to get out of bounds. Breaks a tackle before getting out of bounds. So if the Vulcans were able to bring him down, 
Maybe we would have seen Kutztown take their time. I'm not sure, but good job that time by Hasey to break the tackle and make his way out of bounds. First and 10 from the 27. And stops the clock. 56.2 seconds left here in the first half. Three wide receivers on the near, one on the far. Novak utilizing some hard counts here, trying to get the Vulcans to jump, and they've looked a little antsy a few times. Novak steps up in the pocket, fires over towards the left side, and caught by Ravenel Jr., who's able to pick up the first down and Ravenel get his way out of bounds. Perfectly executed by Kutztown. That stops the clock with 49.9 on the clock. Little zone defense there right now. Uh, Vulcans leaving that flat wide open. In uh, this type of uh, time management game right now, you would expect a lot of quick outs and in routes. No, not really in routes, but out routes to uh, try to conserve time so they're right there in the out-of-bounds spot. Yeah, you wouldn't expect a ton of throws in the middle of the field. And whistle blown. And it looks like California yeah. going to take their first timeout. 49.9 seconds left on the clock. Their first timeout of the half. Just trying to Maybe they didn't like what they saw out of Kutztown on their offensive end matched up with their defense. So it gives them a chance to stop the clock just and have a chance to just sit there, talk, figure out what they want to do the last 49.9 seconds left. Because if you're Cal, you obviously don't want to give up the touchdown. But you're just trying to figure out how many yards you're willing to give up for Kutztown to get within field goal range. We saw their kicker out there earlier, Evans, hitting around 50-yard field goals. So... The Vulcans can give up a few more of those plays that we just saw there where they were completed to Ravenel for the quick first down and out of bounds. So the Vulcans are going to have to be pretty staunch on this, uh, uh, just taking away this flat. You know, Vulcans right now on their heels uh, with, these, with the play calls by uh, Kutztown right now. Haven't been able to uh, stop them so far. As you said, uh, the kicker uh, wouldn't, uh, wouldn't want um, Vulcans to give up a uh, Good fielding position. I'd imagine the target for uh, Kutztown maybe is probably about the Vulcan 35, which would probably be excellent. And is if you uh, manage the clock right, you won't have to worry for it necessarily how far back the kick is. Yeah, so about 25 more yards as Novak back to pass, stepping up in the pocket, gets hit as he's thrown, but the pass is complete in the middle of the field to Davis McNeil, who falls forward for the first down. The but the pass caught in the middle of the field. The clock stops and because stop. the, uh, it got down. the first Ten down. From the 50. Now the clock rolling again. Novak looking, firing to his left, and pass caught by Ravenel Jr., and he's able to make his way out of bounds. With the All of last year, that was one of the changes as Game they would three. stop the clock after every first down. Second after down every first down seven. so that the chains could move. But now... They only stop it within the last two minutes of the half. So the Kutztown utilizing that time wisely. Second down and six now. 31.7 sec seconds left. And you said about the Kutz or the Vulcan 35-yard line, so about, about 10 yards or so to go. Novak back to pass. Rolling to his right under a ton of pressure. Heaving it down the field. Caught at the Vulcan 20. Wide open is Mecky Gibson, and he's going to get brought down inside of the Vulcan 10-yard line. Man, Vulcan's letting that up there. I'm not sure what I've seen. Might have been like a cover two look. First Playing zone again, uh, letting that sideline wide open. It's going to be forced out at exactly the Vulcan 10-yard line. So first and goal, I believe. Yeah, it looks like the chains are going to be dropped. First and goal now. From the 10, 23.2 seconds left. And Kutzan has their timeout. And I think this one's going to go against California. Some more movement on that far side. And I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be Ibrahim Sonogo. The guilty party as it looks like he was moving. Yeah, offside called against Sonogo. And so the ball's going to be placed at the five-yard line. So Kutzan... Getting, uh, just having this drive, I think, work out about as perfectly as you could have hoped so far. Yes, but yeah, for Kutztown. Uh, Vulcan's just a complete defensive breakdown here. Great play calling, I'd say, by Kutztown. 
Or they even get this far from their, what, their own 25. First and five, handoff to Davis McNeil, trying to plunge forward. He's going to get brought down at the two-yard line, and Kutztown going to take their last timeout. Stops the clock with 17.1 seconds left. It'll be second and goal from the two. Or from the three, excuse me. So it's going to be California have it all to do on this defensive end because when you're this close, like it isn't just pass, pass, pass now for Kutztown. They have the option to do either pass or run. So the Vulcans have to be on their toes to try to f try to s uh, sniff it out and try to get a stop here. Yeah, we'll see what Kutztown decides to do here because if they decide to run and they don't get it, you don't have a lot of time to get the, your line together unless you can gather everyone up that quick and line up on sides and hopefully get nothing called against you. But if you go a pass here, there's always a possibility of an interception. But if the ball falls incomplete, then you'd have a stop clock. Yeah, if Kutztown do run the ball here, it's going to be very hard for them to get all set up again, spike the ball, and get their field goal unit back out onto the field. So the Vulcan defense has to put up a fight here, has given up a few big plays on this drive that started all the way back at their at the own, their Kutzon's own 12-yard line. Novak under center. Play action pass rolling, wow. firing into the end zone. Touchdown, Kutztown. It'll be Nick Lavenguth. Lavin Youth on the reception and like I said I think that was just textbook yep. from Kutztown marches their way down the field in under in about a minute and 20 seconds able to go the distance and able to break in the end zone 19 to 7 to score awaiting the extra point and just a breakdown by great I'll say great offensive run there by Kutztown just that flat has killed Vulcan killed the Vulcans Evitt's extra point is up, and his extra point is good. 20-7 to seven to score, 12.7 seconds left to go here in the first half. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back on CTV. CTV Sports 1, the PSAC Network, 91.9 FM. Suffering from World Cup withdrawal? Well, Vulcan men's and women's soccer has you covered. Come up and watch the region's best soccer teams do battle in a combined 18 home games at the beautiful Phillipsburg Soccer Complex. In addition, three men's and three women's home games will be featured live on CUTV Sports 1 and the PSAC Digital Network. Follow Cal Vulcans for up-to-date information on all things Vulcan soccer. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Adamson Stadium as the Vulcans down 20 to 7 in the first half to the Kutztown Golden Bears. It's been all Kutztown, all half. Just this running game has been lights out, but they showed off that they can do the passing game as well as they were able to march their way down the field in garbage time, a minute and 20 seconds left in the half. And, Lu er, and uh, Will is going to field the kickoff, going to get brought down. At the 16-yard line, 7.1 seconds left Makes his way on the, the clock. And so far, this California offense has not been able to get going at all. I wouldn't say this is any, sh any stranger. I've seen a lot of games last year for California where they were slow to start on offense, especially in the first half, but they were able, really able to pick it up in the second half. And if you're the Vulcans or if you're a Vulcan fan, it looks like Black going to come out here. And Vulcans are going to take the knee and go to half. That's what you're going to need. You're going to need a complete turnaround from this Vulcans offense in the second half of play. That'll be the end of the first we'll half. We'll see what score. Golden Bears coach will decide decides to do here. See if they can turn things around. And this is what Coach done. Gets paid the big, bu big bucks for. He's going to have to give his team uh, one heck of a pep talk. During this uh, during this halftime break, and that is the end of your first half of play of the Vulcan season. California chilling twenty to seven at Kutztown. We're going to take a break. 
We'll be right back for your second half on CUTV, CUTV Sports 1, the PSAC Network, and 91.9 FM WCAL Power 92, your home of the Vulcan Sports Radio Network. I'm an ex-drug dealer, and I'll be your sub today. Lethal doses in here. Who gets it? I won't know. It's cheap, it's potent, and it's profitable. The sad reality is fentanyl is being mixed into everything now. More kitchen now.
Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Adamson Stadium as we begin the second half between California and Kutztown. The Golden Bears have a 20-7 lead over the California Vulcans, and not a ton of highlights, I guess, from California in that first half. I think uh, the best word that I could use to describe it, maybe a little bit uninspired, especially on the, on sense, uh, on the offensive end of the ball here for Cal. Yeah, Vulcans showing... A few plays into the game showing some uh, promise uh, there, but as the game started to go on, I'm guessing Kutztown started to recognize the offensive scheme early and started to shut them down as the uh, Vulcans' offense here has been pretty stag stagnant these like this last quarter especially. Yeah, I'm just looking at a couple of these first-half stats, a few that really jump to my eye. First downs, 14 for Kutztown compared to three of California. Total yards, 100. 248 for Kutztown on 37 offensive plays, 98 total yards on offense for California, and 21 plays. If you take away the 65-yard touchdown run by Eric McCann, that is 20 plays for 33 yards on the offensive end combined. 17 passing yards, 81 rushing yards. It has not been a good start to this half for California's offense. Yeah, these numbers I feel like don't tell the whole tail of this game because looking at that you would think this game was was they were down by a lot um, they're still within reach that is for sure the game isn't over till it's over hopefully Vulcans can make some adjustments here and let's see how both of these teams will continue to play each other yeah this offense is going to step up in a big way and I think the last stat that really jumps to my eye is the time of possession we talked about how Kutztown always had a commanding had a commanding hold of it last week against Assumption and they do again today 19 minutes and 14 seconds of possession in that first half compared to the Vulcans 1046 so almost doubling the Vulcans time of possession on the offensive end which if I mean if you have that much time of possession in any game you're always going to be favored to win just because you have the control of the ball the game is in your hands yep. and this second half is definitely in the hands of the Golden Bears and it's their chance to kind of seal it away and it's up for the Vulcans to kind of make that step back try to right the wrongs of the first half and uh, to dig themselves out of the hole they find them in to start the second half. Of course, yeah, especially if you have that much uh, possession time, you are getting first downs. Because kick gets his underway. Lloyd fumbles it in and around the two-yard line, able to pick it back up. Lloyd trying to get to the outside, going to get ran down by a herd of Vulcans. Around the 13-yard line, so Lo uh, Lloyd looking a little shaky on that uh, on that kick return, but still had plenty of time to recover and able to get uh, the Golden Bears started at their own 13. Cuts down that bobble there by Kutztown might cost them a little bit. I guess we'll see if the Vulcans are able to capitalize off that field possession field position. Yeah, and the one man for this Kutztown offense that was doing it all in the first half was Daryl Davis McNeil, the running back. 14 rushes for 82 yards in that first half. Averaging 5.9 yards per carry was just lights out. Nearly out uh, performing the entirety of the Vulcans offense by himself. Yeah. First and 10 handoff up the middle. A gain of a couple there for Kutztown. It was Davis McNeil yet again with another carry. Going to pick up about one or two on the play. Back to the run game for Kutztown. As you can see, they're not really trying to give up too many, go to too many pass plays, I guess. If it's not broke, don't fix it. You know, I mean, at this point, they're just, they can do whatever they want. They can wind down the clock as much as they want because they have the lead. They don't, need, they don't need to come back in this game. The Vulcans have to take the initiative to get back. And like you said, if California can't get the stops, then why change anything? Second and eight now from the 15, play action pass. Under a ton of pressure, Miller... Nearly is able to get to Novak, and Novak forced to throw that one out of bounds. Bring up a third and long now here for the Golden Bears offense. There goes that pressure again from the Vulcans, uh, <laughs> which was pretty much non-existent in the last drive where uh, Kutz Kutztown uh, threw that touchdown pass. Maybe. I guess uh, they made some adjustments there, or coach talked to them and gave them a little bit of pep talk there. Yeah, because on the few offensive possessions before that for Kutztown, the Vulcans were getting to Novak pretty quickly, but that last possession, Novak did a good job of getting the ball out. Novak's going to keep it 
on the third and eight and great play calling by the Golden Bears. Caught everyone on California off guard. And the quarterback draw going to pick up enough for the first down. Right, man, right now, Kutztown just playing with the Vulcans defense. Great play calling, I'd say, so far from Kutztown, keeping them guessing, not really keeping to one aspect of the game. You know, ten yard run for Novak. Gonna bring the ball to the twenty five yard line, first and ten. New set of downs for the Golden Bears. Pistol formation. Novak looking over to the quarterbacks on the far side, giving him the signals. Novak, handoff. Trying to bounce it out to the outside is Davis McNeil. And he's brought down after a gain of about one or two. I believe on the making that play. Yep, Matt Toby making that play there. Great read there coming out, coming out of there to the, uh, keep that run to a short game there. Second down and nine now from the 26. 13 minutes left to go here in the third quarter. In that first half, the Kutztown three for seven on third downs. And now after this, that last one, four for eight, so 50% on, on third down conversions compared to the Vulcans, one of five. So Kutztown just outdoing California in all departments. Novak hands it off to Williams this time, who is spun around and spun down for a loss of a yard. I believe it was Sunogo making the tackle. So another third and long situation on this drive for Kutztown. We'll see if uh, Vulcans here are able to uh, shut down Kutztown on this third down conversion. And this is another opportunity for Cal that you cannot give cuts. You cannot give cuts on any life. You need to get the defense off the field. Third and ten now from the twenty-five. Novak in the shotgun. Four receivers set for him. Novak back to pass, looking to his right now, firing towards his right. That one is incomplete. In a good third down stop from California, able to get the defense off the field, bring on the punting unit of cuts down. Great stop there by the Vulcans, able to uh, shut down what has these last few, especially la last quarter, last drive. Offense has seemed almost unstoppable, unstoppable, but great way for there by the Vulcans to come together. Millard's punt, going to get fielded by Willis at the 35. Willis trying to find a lane on the outside. Get some positive yardage on the return, going to get brought out at the 44. So the Vulcans... Very good field position to start their first possession of the second half. And I was talking to a few people outside. I was talking to one of our cameramen, Andrew White. And I was talking to uh, um, Mr. Toby, Matt Toby's father. And we were talking about how this hasn't been the greatest performance from Cal so far, but especially on the offensive end. But they can only get better, I think. I think after that first half, that is probably about the worst you could have expected them to do. So I think it can only go up from here. Yeah. Good thing about being at rock bottom, there's only one way to go, and that's up. Hopefully they're able to improve from the season. That's first game jitters for you. Play action. Black back to pass under a ton of pressure, and Black just has to throw it away. Good coverage down the field from the Golden Bears secondary. No Vulcans were open at all. Black had to just get that one out. Incomplete pass, second down and 10 now for Cal. Welcomes here going no huddle. Maybe just a change of change of pace. Maybe that will just light something in this Vulcan offense and maybe catch cuts down off guard a little bit. 12 seconds left on the play clock. Two wide receivers on the far side, one on the near. And off to McCann. McCann able to break a tackle and able to work his way up the field. Gains about three on the play. Gets to the 46-yard line. Third down and seven now for California. Not a bad game there by McCann. Hope you were hoping there for he would break free and get a few more yards there, but great tackle by Kutztown. Able to keep that shorter. McCann broke off one, but Kutztown sent a few more numbers at him. He wasn't going to break off two or three of the, the tacklers there on that play. Third down and seven. Three receivers on the near side for California. One on the far. McCann still in the backfield next to Black. Black gets the snap. Firing to the right side of the pass. is Caught 
And one tackle missed, two tackles misses, and oh. the ball comes out. Fumble. There's a scrum for it there around the 37 yard line. And it looks like Kutztown signaling that they have it. And in fact, they do. Kutztown have the ball. It was Johnson on the reception. He made a few players miss, but got stripped trying to do so. And once California finally get another first down, they shoot themselves in the foot again. Another turnover going the Golden Bears way. Yeah, that was a great reception. But it did what, uh, what happened was uh, he got cut up tall, which is, again, I said, it's not something you want to do exactly. And as soon as you get a cut up, tall, cut up t high, you probably want to cover it with two hands. I mean, there's not much you can do against uh, being stripped like that. So, But that is not something that is great for this team. So Kutztown now with possession. Handoff on the play. First town run, and it's going to be a big gain. This time, number 35 for Kutztown. Steven Burkhart gets his first carry of the game, and it's going to be enough for a first down. Gain of 11 on the play. And Kutztown just going back to that run. I mean, it is, it is working. 10 yards, about a 10-yard gain on that play. You could get 10 yards on every run play why would you ever stop yeah like, like you said they ha they have no reason to change what they're doing they need to force california to make the changes and california so far just have not had an answer man in motion handoff again to burkhart and burkhart this time gets stuffed california able to read that one out and burkhart gonna get stopped at the line of scrimmage and yeah, great stop there by the vulcans what, what i'm noticing here is as soon as that happens, uh, Kutztown is changing up their play calling, and it's keep putting uh, Vulcans on their heels. And so far, they just haven't been able to uh, adjust fast enough, or as I say, it's a game of chess. You have to predict, almost predict, what play is going to happen next. I guess we'll see if uh, the Vulcans are able to uh, get a handle on it here and able to uh, predict what Kutztown's going to do next. 9-27 and running here in the third quarter. Second down and 10. Three receivers now on the near side. Handoff this time to Williams. Williams gets spun down at the line of scrimmage. The cuts down trying to knock down the door twice, and the Vulcans holding strong. Bring up a big third down and ten here from the 50. And it looks like there's an injured Golden Bear down on the field just inside that 50-yard line. And then so far, California, they need to have an answer here. It has been... They are quickly running out of time. I think they still have plenty of time, only down by 13, but I feel like if you are unable to get a stop here, it's going to be very difficult as we can take a look at the upcoming schedule here for Cal. Obviously, today's game against Kutztown, the next week playing at another familiar phone, Shepard. Shepard, and the 23rd at Edinburgh, 30th at Clarion, uh, October 7th at IUP, October 14th at home at Seton Hill, October 21st at Slippery Rock. October 28th here at home at Mercy here against Mercy Harris. November 4th at Gannon. And November 11th at East Stroudsburg. Yeah, a bunch of road games for Cal this season, just the way that the schedule plays out. And a couple of big ones. The homecoming game against Seton Hill on October 14th. And then the week before, the Cole Bowl at IUP. It would be a big matchup for both teams, as it always is. And it's always a fun one to do maybe go up there see a few of our friends uh see former CTV man Peyton Trollinger third down and 10 now Novak scrambling out to his left and has to throw that one out of play another third down stop for California interesting play call from Kutztown there as Novak forced to roll towards his left and Great coverage down the field from Cal. Vulcan's uh, defensive team, defensive coordination, able there to, uh, I guess, predict what Kutztown was going to do next. Defense right, o right all over that. I say rollouts are a uh, high, risk, high reward type thing where it gives space to quarterback to see everything, but if you have defense rushing him, he doesn't have much time. Hopkins and Willis back to receive the punt. That one, a bit of a short one, but takes a friendly roll for Kutztown, and that one's going to go out of bounds at the Vulcan 14-yard line. First and 
It's going to be 8.37 left to play here in the, the third quarter. And this offense finally showed a little bit of life in that last possession, but it was Johnson who got stripped. And so once again, it is on. It, the ball is in California's court, and they need to respond, and they need to respond in a big way. I feel like you can't really come out of this possession without anything but a touchdown if you want to have any say in this game going down the stretch. Yeah, Vulcans definitely need, definitely need a momentum shifter here. Handoff this time to Bobby Boyd Jr., the first time we've seen him today as he <laughs> breaks off one tackle and is able to power himself forward and picks up about three on the play. And I feel like that's been the big difference between both of these rushing attacks is Kutztown, when they run it, they're so much more efficient on the ground than California has been so far. Yeah, Vulcan's uh, running game has been struggling so f so far with a few breakaways there, such as that touchdown run by McCann earlier, but I feel like that was kind of something that happened probably once in a blue moon. Yeah, when, you have, when you're able to set up the rushing so well, the pass can just work perfectly on the back of it. Second and seven, quick pass outside, caught at the 22-yard line by Hamlin, who's pushed out of bounds at the 25. That's enough for a first down. And the Vulcans finally able to pick themselves up a first down. And that what we saw there was like a little bit of a zone. I'm not sure exactly if it was a high two or what, but the zones are never really meant to just limit yardage. It's meant to limit yardage and not stop, stop it altogether. I guess if you do it right, it, do, it, do, it can work pretty well. So a new set of downs here for California. 7.25 to go. Black hands it off, or keeps it himself, fakes the hand off to Boyd, tries to break one tackle. But great wrap-up on the outside that time by Jalen Hill of the Golden Bears secondary, able to hold Black to a, a, a one-yard gain. That was a pretty good tackle, I'd say. I'm telling you, open field tackles are never the easiest to make, where it was a little bit one-on-one -on -one there, able to even come off a block at that, too, and make that play. And after watching that high school game last night that you were refereeing, uh, I have <laughs> it is a it is a a breath of fresh air, I guess. Even though it is against my team, it is nice to see some open field tackling done right. Yeah. Second and nine, black back to pass, firing to his right hand side, caught, past the first down, and makes a defender miss. Vulcans inside of Kutztown territory. That's Hopkins on the reception there for California. And the Vulcans find themselves on the Kutztown 49-yard line. Seemed like they were in a cover two there. In a cover two, that middle was like wide open. Cover two is kind of your middle ground when it comes to zone coverage, whereas you leave your linebackers up to help protect the run, but you're, you have defensive backs, and it kind of is like the middle ground between the two of them. There, just left the middle wide open. First and 10, black back to pass. Bit of a scary pass, but able to be completed on this near side. Bless it able to pull that one in for a five-yard gain. Black had to be accurate on that one because if he left that one a little bit behind Blessed, that's an interception going the other way. Yeah, threaded the needle there, able to put it right where it needed to be. And great hands there by the receiver. Vulcan's passing attack. Like we said, it could only go up only 17 yards in that first half and pretty much dub double that so far on this drive alone. 5.30 left to go here in the third. Black, handoff this time to McCann. McCann ran into a wall of Kutztown defenders. Going to get brought down for no gain on the play. So a third and long now here for California. California, this drive doing a better job of uh, mixing up the play calls and putting uh, Kutztown on their heels. Of course, this is a third down a little bit longer than you would like. Third down, anything within like maybe five yards is probably what you want, but just outside of that, I guess we'll see what, what they do here. Third and seven for Cal on the Kutztown 46-yard line. Would be interesting to see if this is kind of a field situation if California doesn't get it. Coach Dunn decides to go for it on fourth down, but third and seven. Black back to pass, firing in the middle, caught. Right around the first down marker by Hopkins again. And it looks like forward progress is going to give him the first down. So the Vulcans get a new set of downs. Great hold on that time by Hopkins. Yeah. Great catch. Yeah, as you said, great catch there. And we're able to hold on to it as I feel like zone sometimes can uh, scare your receivers. Uh, 
the presence of a man being there uh, can definitely scare you out of catching that ball. I and mean, a great way to hold on there. Hopkins, the junior out of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Stepping up in a big way here so far. Black back to pass. Stepping to his left. Going to get brought down in the backfield. Can't, couldn't escape that time by Nigel Wilson. Able to bring him down. And Wilson had a few things to say to him <laughs> as he was getting back to his feet. That's the type of plays you never really want to ha what happen. Uh, quarterback's eyes down the field, not really paying attention, thinking he's free to go, but reacted just a little bit too late and not really to do much out, out of there. Kenny couldn't even throw it away because he was still in the pocket. Nine-yard loss, second and 19 now from the Kutztown 48-yard line. Black, back to pass. Screen pass set up for Williams, and William, er, Black under a ton of pressure. Left that ball for Williams in an awkward spot. Williams able to come up with the catch, but going to get downed immediately. So it's going to be a third and forever now here for Cal. Third and 21 as that went down as a two or a two yard loss. So third and 21 now from the Cal or from the Cutstown 49. I'm assuming we'll see here some maybe somewhat of a deep pass to get them within field goal range. If not, it may not be the end of the world, but you don't want to turn on empty hat handed, especially in a drive like this. That sack sure did take him back a little bit. Yeah, you need to put points on the board here if you're California. Four seconds left on the play clock, so Cal needs to get him, get it off quickly. Black, able to get it. F whistles, flags thrown, and it's going to be a false start against Cal. And right when you think that the offense finally has some steam, it seems just like the, uh, the, the, the train ran out of gas there. And, uh, a little bit, and it seems like the Vulcans just self-inflicting injuries now find themselves back on their side of the field at their own 47. Oof. I'm not going to say it's impossible for Cal to get, but they're going to need a, I need a miracle here to get this first down. Third and 26 now from the 50. Or from their own side of the field. Black back to pass, throwing deep down the right side. Pass is caught! In and around the 15-yard line by Martin. Flags thrown. So I wouldn't be surprised. Waiting to see if there's going to be a pass interference call. But the Vulcans offense moving up the field. So I think this one's going to go to California's way. Yeah, if this is against Kutztown, they might as well. I think they would just decline it here because that's way more than 15 yards. And waiting to see the official call. It's all Kutztown immediately signaling for the offensive pass interference. Waiting for the referee's call. Yep. This one's going to go against Kutztown. So I said they needed a miracle, and <laughs> I guess the miracle isn't really what they needed because they got it after all. DeMonte Martin pulling in the reception there for California. Big, tall wide receiver with long arms. Able to just get out there, and a good throw by Black able to find him. Picks up the first down, and now the Vulcans inside of the Kutztown red zone. Great way for Vulcans to come out on top of that with their backs against the wall. guess we'll see if they're able to capitalize off of this. First and 10 from the 18, 157 left to go here in the third black. Hands it off. Off the left-hand side, picks up a couple. Boyd Jr. on the rushing attempt that time, picks up about two. And it feels like the Vulcans able to just get a little bit of energy. I commend the Kutztown fans for making the trip out here because I know that is not the... Uh, the easiest drive as we made it we went out there last year oh. and that was uh, about a five six hour drive in the car so I commend them for making their way out here to come watch this game talk about dedication but the Vulcan fans just gaining a little bit of life it's 115 left here in the third black back to pass under pressure stepping up and getting thrown down in the backfield sacked again by number 48 Devin Jones, but flag on the play, and I think he might have got ripped around the horse collar. Yeah, horse collar. It definitely has to be a horse collar. Flag in came in a little bit late, but let's see. There's going to be no foul for a horse collar, and I think whenever it happened, that was my first thought immediately because it looks like he got grabbed right in the back, right above the numbers yep. in that backside, but he said the quarterback was still in the pocket. I, don't, I did not know. 
that was a uh, Dang, that news. was a stipulation for the for the horse color tackle. That's news to me. I mean, of course, there's always a, there's always going to be difference between uh, high school and college rules. Now, I'm not kept up on the uh, college rules, but that is definitely a new one I've never heard before. So this brings up a third and 17 now for California. We saw them convert the last one. Can they do the same one here? Black back to pass, firing near side, caught. And one move made that time again by Martin. Martin's going to be well, um, going to get pushed out of bounds well short of the first down. But the Vulcans in field goal territory here. It's going to be about fourth and 11. And looks like the offense is still lingering on here. Looks like Coach Dunn maybe wants to go for it here. And if not, maybe just wants to waste some time. They have enough time. On the game cl or on the play clock, to just not run any play, I believe. So they might just wait until the fourth quarter starts, and that will be it. Looks like they're going to discuss at this break the end of their third quarter. Kutztown twenty, California seven. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back for your last quarter of coverage here on CTV, CTV Sports 1, the PSAC Network and 91.9 FM, WCAL Power 92, and your home, the Vulcan Sports Radio Network. Vulcan Volleyball is back, and you can have the best seat in the house. The Convocation Center will be rocking with 11 home games featuring some of the best teams in the region and the PSAC. All home games will be streamed live on CUTV Sports 1 and the PSAC Digital Network. Follow Cal Vulcans on all social media platforms for up-to-date schedules and information. Vulcan Volleyball and you, a winning combination. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the fourth quarter between California and Kutztown. And it looks like the Vulcans have decided to bring out the field goal unit. Looking at the stat sheet that we were just given from that third quarter, 101 passing yards, like the Dalmatians, <laughs> for California in that third quarter. So the passing offense definitely picked up. As Anthony Bitko out to attempt a field goal here for California. About 29-yard field goal. Biko's kick is up. Biko's kick is good. One of the best kickers in the PSAC makes it a 10-point game, 20 to 10. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back here on CUTV, CUTV Sports 1 and the PSAC Network. Suffering from World Cup withdrawal? Well, Vulcan men's and women's soccer has you covered. Come up and watch the region's best soccer teams do battle in a combined 18 home games at the beautiful Phillipsburg Soccer Complex. In addition, three men's and three women's home games will be featured live on CUTV Sports 1 and the PSAC Digital Network. Follow Cal Vulcans for up-to-date information on all things Vulcan soccer. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Adams and Stadium. We just saw you. We just left and we just came back again. Uh, Anthony Biko's kick able to bring the game to a 10 point game. Could sound still leading 20 to 10. Biko's kick going to get us underway once again. Fielded at the nine yard line. Looking for a running lane up the side is Ravenel Jr., who's going to get brought down at the Kutztown 32 yard line. So this defense so far in the second half for California has put up a very, very good fight and just waiting for the offense to uh, to do their part of the bargain and get some points on the board. They've made it a 10-point game, so the defense still has plenty of work to do. 
to try to keep this game within reach for Cal. Yep, and I bet right now uh, there might be a little bit of complaining or a little bit of, of course, there's going to be a little bit of rivalry between your offensive and defensive teams. And defensive team probably telling the offense to do their job, which they struggled a little, slight, a little bit to do so far in this game. First and 10 from the 27, man in motion, handoff once again up the middle to Davis McNeil. They would pick up a good gain on first down. Brings it to the 31, so four yards on first down there for Kutztown. And I think this defensive possession here for California really has a chance to turn their tides in, the, in their favor. If they're able to come up with a big stop, whether that be getting the defense off the field with forcing a fourth down or with a turnover. I think either one would be huge here for California. Play action pass. Novak back to throw, and he gets hit as he's thrown, and that pass just off the fingertips of his, of his intended receiver, Amorim. Amorim had a little bit of separation, but that one, he had to be a, about a foot taller if he was able to pull that one in. Man, was that close. Uh, Vulcan's there rushing five, which probably uh, – Rush to play just a, just a little bit, but great defense there by the Vulcans. Yeah, good pressure that time from California. Able to get back there, I believe it was Miller in and around the scene. And he's been so, all, so far this game, third and six now for Kutztown from their own 31. Novak back to pass, looking under pressure again, rolling and finding. Davis McNeil up the sideline. McNeil able to break off one tackle. And McNeil able to get inside the Vulcan territory. Brought out of bounds finally at the 30-yard line. But a flag thrown all the way back on the Kutztown side of the field. Holding against Kutztown. So the huge play. About a 50-yard swing. Going to go back in the way of the Vulcans' favor. That play coming all the way back. So what, it, what could have been a first and 10 inside the Vulcan 30 now be a third and 16 from the Kutztown 21. And that, that, I can tell you that is never fun, especially being on the receiving end of that. Have a big play just to have it go back all the way from not even where your run ended, but from the line of scrimmage shows it's if it never even happened. The Vulcans catch a break, and I'm, I'm sure they'll take that every day of the week. <laughs> yeah. Third and 16 now. We saw the California convert on a few of these in the last possession. And the, again, the Vulcans able to get a ton of pressure to Novak. Novak back to pass. Screen pass it up, and Novak able to roll away from it. But under pressure again, Novak keeping it. And Novak is going to get the first down, and he's going into Vulcan territory. Novak running up the sideline. And it doesn't even matter because the, they're back in the same spot. Ran out of bounds at the 30. Goodness gracious. Novak showing off some uh, mobility there. Able to uh, escape the pocket and escape what would have surely have been a, uh, you would have thought, a sack. But showing great mobility there to, uh, oh my gosh. Yeah, Judd Novak showing off the wheels a bit and pretty much saying to California, I mean, we're going to get the, the ball don't lie, I guess. Is <laughs> we This is where we were last time. We're getting right back to it. First and 10 now from the Vulcan 33. And that was a chance for the Vulcans defense to make a big change in this game. Handoff once again to Davis McNeil, who gets brought down after picking up another four yard gain ball placed at around the 30 yard line. Oh, I feel like there's just gotta be a moral defeater if you're California, because they gave up the big play, got called back, and you're like, our second chance to kind of redeem ourselves a little bit. Yep. And that, and, but Novak able to make them pay. Yeah, it's never fun, especially like this, in a game like this where you want to have a chance to uh, come back in this game where you just give up something like that after, even after a second chance. Second and seven. Davis McNeil gets stuffed right at the line by a couple of Vulcans, Matt Toby. in and around the area as well as John Hutchinson a Vulcan down on the field looks like number 98 Julian Lavenshire 
down on the ground there for California. Hopefully nothing too serious, but that'll stop the clock with 11.48 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Oh, I think, <laughs> I think they're just saying to look at the camera there. <laughs> yeah, we're getting some signals all over the place. Just trying to figure out <laughs> what we're trying to do. Looks like Lavender back to his feet. Is able to walk off without the help of anyone on the team. So Hopefully definitely a good sign. Yeah, it might have just been a cramp because I, matter of fact, these last couple weeks, few weeks of uh, matter of fact, first week of football, I was at Manesson, uh There was probably a time where we had seven plays in a row where players ended up on the ground. Uh, with cramps, it is. It was. It was. Been, it's been terrible. Uh, last night was probably the first game I had. We've had where it didn't have someone with a cramp. Yeah, I don't blame them because all the hot weather deciding to to break in September. Oh. Big third down, third and seven from the Vulcan thirty. Novak back to pass. Vulcan rushing a ton. Novak's throw down the sideline, incomplete. Trying to find Ravenel Jr. Fourth, uh, big third down stop for California. And Kutztown and Novak looking over to the sideline to see what, they, what they're going to do. There's high risk, high reward there by the Vulcans. As you see that they have pulled off a blitz there. Uh, and they've kind of put a, of course, man-to-man -man is always a uh, hard defense to, to play. So extra man uh, lessening the time um, Novak had to uh, throw there. It looks like they're keeping the offense on the field for the fourth and seven. Five seconds left on the play clock, so maybe just trying to draw the Vulcans offside. But they're going for it. Fourth down. Novak back to pass, throwing. Incomplete just off of the hands of Hasty. And like you said, high risk, high reward, and it doesn't pay off as the Vulcans able to get the fourth down stop, and they're going to get the ball back at their own 30-yard line. I wouldn't say necessarily it was a bad play call, but they're uh, by Kutztown. Uh, this field positioning, not didn't re they don't really have much to lose at this point. So not a bad play call, it just didn't pan out. Yeah, it would have been a bit of a far field goal. Well, that would be about 49, 40. So it would have been in the 40s. Yeah. And I don't think uh, maybe it just shows that they're not entirely confident in Dawson Evitts leg and like you said it was a good play call but Novak just couldn't get the throw on target so the Vulcans will take over from their 30 first and 10 with 11 19 to play here in the fourth quarter black back to pass cuts town sending a bunch on the blitz black able to roll to his right and black went for the stutter step I'm gonna get brought down for about a one yard loss as he was trying to scramble out to his right and uh, maybe if he would have just kept going and tried to turn the corner, he would have picked up some more yardage, but hesitated a little bit. Yeah, his indec indecisiveness kind of messed him up there. He had, had a couple men open downfield too, uh, but decided to tuck it around, which he could have done also, but kind of just stuttered and stopped. Waited a bit too long. Yeah. So loss of two, second and 12 now from the 28. Two receivers on the near, one on the far. Black. Gets a snap, firing towards the left-hand side. It caught just past the 30-yard line by Willis the third. It's going to be about a third and eight now for Cal. And they have to get, they, ha they need to get this first down. I feel like if you want to have any, any sort of shot at the end of this game because you need to get some points on this drive to make it a one-possession game going into the last 10 minutes. Four receivers set for Cal. Two on the near, two on the far. It's going to be McCann in the backfield. Next to Black. Could stand rushing for Black back to pass. Firing in the middle. Caught. Ooh. Firing into a tight window to Hopkins again. And we've seen Black and Hopkins linking up for a couple of these nice plays. Yeah. Threaded the needle there. Waited just in time because, as I said earlier, it's own. You kind of have to you kind of have to wait for that window, and it's never the same on each play. Yeah, on that replay, they're showing fires it between three or four defenders from Goodstown and able to get Hopkins. Who's been the best receiving threat so far for California? Trips 
on the far side, one on the near. McCann in the backfield next to Black. 9-12 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Black fakes the handoff, keeps it himself, and Black able to make a defender miss and able to pick up positive yardage. Three on the play on the read option. Great read there in order to take it for a few yards. I mean, I can't say too many uh, defensive are, ex are expecting to the uh, quarterback to tuck it and run unless the quarter quarterback just likes to scramble like that. Yeah, we'll say with Black and with uh, Noah Mitchell in previous years, both of them not known for their their mobility, especially in the running the game. Both of them are able to scramble, get out of the pocket, and make plays, but both of them not known for as a rushing type quarterback. Like you said, not aware, not not really worried about the play, uh, the read option, as Blacks throw on the far side, right into the hands of his intended target, Martin. And he just f drops it right around the sticks, and that's going to be a third down and seven now for Cal. No, I'm not going to uh, be the one to bash because I've never been a receiver, but those type of uh, wide-open catches is something you want to have to uh, – Is I say it's so crucial to a game like that. Could have, would have had it, but just didn't quite grasp it. Third and seven now from the Vulcan 48-yard line. Black back to pass, throwing it on the near side, caught at the 35. Great turn up the field by Blessed. And Blessed and the Vulcans now find themselves inside of Golden Bear territory. That ball down at the 26 yard line. The Vulcans offense starting to pick up here in the second half. Man, it seemed the ball seemed to be throw, thrown in the same spot as on their last big game. And Cal going no huddle and going quickly. Black throwing it near side, Blessed in the area, but better coverage that time from Kutztown. It was DeVos all over Blessed, and that one went incomplete. See, uh, Kutztown in that last play uh, sending a blitz there. Haven't seen much of a blitz from either team. I guess uh, you'd be risking a lot more, but surprised team, uh, but either, neither teams have really risked, risked it today. Second and 10 now from the Kutztown 27. Fakes the handoff once again. Black trying to make a man miss. Stays on his feet, but gets brought down in the end. It was Henser, the defensive back, coming down. It's going to be no gain on the play. So a third and 10 now for California. We'll see how it uh, Vulcans do here. Vulcans need to get some points. If they're able to get a field goal here, cuts it to a one-score game. But you're going to rely heavily on that defense to get a stop, and then your offense needing to score a touchdown. Three receivers set. McCann in the backfield. Black in the shotgun. Back to pass. Black firing to the near side. Willis makes the catch. It makes a defender miss. Good moves from Willis, who gets pushed out of bounds. And it looks like the Vulcans are going to get another first down as well as going to get pushed out at the 17-yard line. Great moves from Willis, just so quick and so agile in those areas, able to just burst his way outside. Yeah, great wherewithal to even cut it back outside after looking in. The Vulcans still taking a ton of time off the clock. 6.40 left here in the fourth quarter. California need a touchdown, and they need it quickly. Black gets the snap, looking, stepping up in the pocket and throwing it, and his pass is caught by Wills, and Wills breaks a tackle into the end zone. Touchdown, Cal. What a play by your quarterback, Davis Black, and, and Eric Willis makes a man miss and wakes, makes his way into the end zone, and California strike. And that's a great throw there by Black, <laughs> able to even throw outside of that tackle. Uh, Throwing on the run is, isn't an easy thing, and even more so out of that tackle. But great wherewithal and great awareness to even get it there. Yeah, Black doing something you see Patrick Mahomes do, throwing it as he's going down. Beatco's kick is up, and Beatco's kick is good, and we have a ball game now, everybody. 6.23 left here at Addison Stadium. 
20 to 17 the score. We'll be right back on CUTV, CUTV Sports 1, the PSAC Network, 91.9 FM. A new season of Vulcan football is set to begin September 9th versus Kutztown. September 16th versus Shepherd. September 23rd at Edinburgh. September 30 versus Clarion. October 7th at IUP. Homecoming October 14th versus Seton Hill. October 21st at Slippery Rock. October 28th versus Mercyhurst. November 4th at Gannon. November 11th at East Stroudsburg. All games available on CUTV Sports 1 and the PSAC Digital Network. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Adamson Stadium. Kickoff underway. Fielded. Going to be brought down just shy of the 30-yard line. Flag thrown on the back end. And the Vulcans cap off a 10-play, 70-yard drive with a touchdown. It makes it a three-point game. Personal foul going the way, uh, going against Kutztown. So that'll drive them back even further as we can take a look at that touchdown one more time. Davis just, or Black able to just roll out to his right as he's getting brought down, able to find Willis and Willis able to break off one tackle and able to work his way into the end zone. Yeah, great job there. Just about not giving up on the play. As you see, you start to see him go down, it's easy to just... Stop and uh, watch. Yeah, 10 play, 70 yard drive, took 4.56 off the clock. Great offense from Cal. And Kutztown find themselves in an awkward spot. First and 10 from their own 20. Handoff to Davis McNeil, who gets blown up in the backfield. It's Siegel who gets to him first. Brings him down for a loss of one. And I don't know, you could just feel the energy. The energy is now fully in the grasp of California. Yeah, the momentum has definitely shifted after that special touchdown. And we're sitting next to, next to the Kutztown coaching booth. And uh, <laughs> not exactly the happiest campers next to us. Definitely a little bit worried as we've been hearing our coaches yell all game from <laughs> to our right. Second and ten. Novak under a ton of pressure. Novak's brought down at the five-yard line. And who else? Sonogo able to get back there and bring him down. The Vulcans defense stepping up all game and getting the stops when they need the most. Third down and long for Kutztown. Third and 23 from their own seven. Wonderful play calling there by uh, the defense here by the Vulcans. As you see, like the, there was multiple stunts going on on the line and great great hands there by the defense in order to get that sack there. So Nogo and Hutchinson linking up in the backfield to bring down Novak. Third and 23. Crowd chanting defense, Novak back to pass. Novak firing in the middle, <gasps> nearly tipped, but pass incomplete, almost picked off by California. It was Hutchinson again in coverage, but it was almost caught as well as Hasty had it in his hand for a second and it flew out of his hand incomplete. <laughs> Crazy turn of events, but the Vulcans get a stop on third down, fourth down, and Kutz not going to be punting from inside of their own end zone. Oh my goodness, that could have been dangerous. Now the thing is, if you can't catch it, they say swat it, which if it would have, if it would have, um, if Kutz would have caught that, it would have been terrible. Dillard back to punt. It's good, a good, good punt, too. All the way back at the 35, fielded by Willis. Willis trying to work through two. Gets his helmet ripped off as he was trying to work through two defenders on the special team side of the field. One of them being number 47, Kate Clancy, who comes down with a tackle. 436 remaining here for California. All three timeouts. And the Vulcans down by three. 
And it's, I believe Vulcans have all three of their timeouts left. We'll see what Coach is able to come up with here and hoping to. I'd imagine there will be a lot of uh, short, quick passes or quick runs, and I can't imagine them going into huddles too much here. I mean, the story is just setting itself up so perfectly for a Vulcan comeback here in the second half. As I'm saying this, I will probably going to jinx us, but reverse as <laughs> it's going to be Hopkins. Getting a breaking attack and working his way all the way back to the other side of the field. Hopkins working his way into Kutztown territory and gets the stutter step out of bounds. Hopkins outside at the th near the Kutztown 30. Unbelievable. Gets the reverse and runs it all the way back the other way. My goodness, that reverse looked like it was dead blown dead in the water, but able to cut it back and gets a get decent yardage there. I'm not saying you never want to, it's not ever a good thing to cut it back, but it's oftentimes it is ill-advised, able to, great, I say great eye ball carrier vision too, especially the game that. And he just looks so explosive in this game, one of the bright spots on this Vulcan offense. And he comes up with another huge play, first and 10 from the Vulcan, th or from the Kutztown 37. 350 left to go. Black, back to pass, firing towards his right, pass caught by his receiver in Martin. Going to pick up about four on the play. Brought down at the Kutztown 32. Some whistles blown. And there's a Vulcan down inside of the Kutztown in, uh, uh, tw near the NCAA logo at the 20-yard line. And it looks like it is Hopkins who made that big play a couple of plays ago. Oh. He's down on the ground rolling around. Hopefully it's just the cramp because I well that's what it looks like here as they're stretching out his, like his, his leg and stuff. Cramps are never fun. And I hope so as we look at the replay here and that and that reverse that Hopkins was able to turn from what could have been about a 10-yard loss to a 20-yard gain. And Hopkins, like you said, hopefully it's just a cramp and nothing more and he's able to work out because the Vulcans are going to need him down the stretch here. And like we said, he's been one of the these, this offense's bright spots for sure. Yeah, he's been a key contributor to this game so far. And it looks like he's going to make his way back to his feet. He's going to limp off. Not a, not something you'd like to see, but he's going to be able to make his way off the field on his own, which is always a good sign. Holding this calf, and not calf, excuse me, thigh area. Hopkins, one rush for 22 yards and three catches for 45 yards. Responsible for 67 yards of this Vulcan offense so far today. Second and five now from the 32. Davis hands off to McCann. McCann looking for some room. Bounces off one tackle. Is dragging three or four. Is able to break through into the second level. And is going to get brought down at the 15. Of Kutztown player loses their helmet in the process. Another big run from this Vulcan offense. Man, McCann keeping those legs churning. But also, great offense, a great presence by the uh, offensive line to even help him through that. Yeah, McCann not the biggest running back. And the way that he runs the ball, I don't know if you remember, it reminds me a little bit of former Tampa Bay running back Doug Martin, just a small little guy, but so powerful when he runs. Like you said, always keeps his feet moving and is able to just churn up through that, able to break into the second level. And picks up another big game for California. 12 on the play, first and 10 now. Hand off to McCann again. McCann falls forward, picks up two, and the Kutsan coach is next to us. Maybe a little bit upset, I think, yeah. for an illegal, uh, illegal motion. Yeah, yeah. But uh, one hit would have one motion, uh, one in motion up front, and then you had to look like McCann might have taken a step, might have missed it. One of their like, legal shifts, but. If that's the case, the Vulcans get away with it as we are just about to pass the two-minute mark left to play here in the fourth quarter. Game coming down to the wire. The Vulcans well within field goal distance, but would like to punch it in and force the game on it back into Kutztown's court. Second down pass thrown towards the back of the end zone, oh. trying to find Hamlin, and there's a flag thrown in the end zone. Going to be a pass interference against Kutztown. And the Vulcans 
They're gonna have themselves right on, right, right on the door. <laughs> Man, uh, defensive back there for uh, Kutztown. They probably made that easy, easy to see. That call there. Yeah, just pass. B both players just hands all over each other. Pass interference going to go against Kutztown and number three Antoine Lloyd going to get called for the offense and that'll put the ball on the two yard line first and goal now for California who have completely turned this game around for themselves found themselves down 20 to 7 10 unanswered points and are on the brink Vulcans taking their time looking to let this clock say now it's stopped but simmer hand off to McCann McCann fighting for but just shut down at the door. No gain on the play. Brick wall defense by Kutztown. No gain on the play. On the goal line, oh, sorry. <laughs> on the goal line, ball is where football games are won and lost. I guess we'll see what uh, line front is able to push through. They never apologize to me because I talk too much anyway. <laughs> One fifteen left to go here in <laughs> In the fourth quarter, like you said, the Vulcans taking their time because they know that they have the f they th they have the field goal in hand. McCann handoff again. Actually, Black keeps it and Black gets into the end zone. Touchdown, California! Seventeen unanswered points for Cal as Black works his way in, and the Vulcans with a three-point lead with just under a minute to go. Woo. Great offensive drive there by the Vulcans, able to adjust and get out, come out on top. Black with the read option, and like we've said so far, that's not the one that you're concerned about if you're Kutztown, but Black finally makes the Golden Bears pay as he works his way into the end zone. Biko now on for the kick. Biko's kick is up, and Biko's kick is good. Four point game, 50, or 24-20, 57.9 left to go here in the fourth. We'll be right back on CUTV, CUTV Sports 1, the PSAC Network, 91.9 FM. A new season of Vulcan football is set to begin September 9th versus Kutztown. September 16th versus Shepherd. September 23rd at Edinburgh. September 30 versus Clarion. October 7th at IUP. Homecoming October 14th versus Seton Hill. October 21st at Slippery Rock. October 28th versus Mercyhurst. November 4th at Gannon. November 11th at East Stroudsburg. All games available on CUTV Sports 1 and the PSAC Digital Network. Welcome back to Adamson Stadium as the Vulcans have not had the lead for 59 minutes of this game. And they finally are able to take a four-point lead with 57.9 seconds left in this game. Because kick, bit of a squib, going to get fielded at the 10-yard line. It's going to get brought down at the 20. Ravenel Jr. on the return and... I mean, I mean, this is a chance. You couldn't have asked for a better story of this game. Nope. Couldn't have asked for a better way to start the season. A thriller right down to the end of the game. And there's still plenty of twists and turns to go along the way. 52.5 seconds left to go here in the fourth. Kutsan, I believe, has still have all three of their timeouts. Yep. And this is a chance for, for Davis Black to write his name into Vulcan folklore. 17-point comeback, all points scored for Cal in this fourth quarter. They're down 20-7 to seven at half. This defense has been lights out. The offense has done their job and have gotten the Vulcans the lead. And now it's up for the defense to seal it. First and 10 from the 21. Novak back to pass under pressure. And then he's going to get stripped. Novak gets stripped, and the ball's picked up by California. And who's Sunogo again? <laughs> Sunogo does it again for Cal. Josh Miller recovers the fumble, and that just seals the deal for Cal. There is 
No way. <laughs> My heart <laughs> is... I'm not built for this, man. Sunogo and Miller have been wrecking havoc on Kutztown all game long. And they finally come up with the turnover they so desperately needed. Sunogo with the strip, Miller with the recovery, and the Vulcans with the ball on the Kutztown six. Looks like Vulcan here are gonna burn a timeout here too. We've said all game that this defense has been doing their job and they've been doing everything right. They've kept California in the game and you have to give them all the credit in the world. They did everything possible to k make sure that the game was, with, was within reach, just waiting for the offense to strike and the offense finally took off in the second half. They are finally able to get anything going. Vulcans defense, I'd say, put put the offense on their back and told them, let's ride. <laughs> both so far, both teams, both sides able to capitalize. Offense is doing a great job, especially that last drive by the offense, able to adjust. Unbelievable, man. It is. I don't think there's any better way to start your season if you're California storybook type stuff yep. that you should never expect to see and the Vulcans make a 13 point comeback in the second half score 17 unanswered in this fourth quarter and come and the defense comes up with the biggest stop of them all first and 10 from the six handoff to McCann McCann powering forward just at the goal line gonna get brought down at the two and Kutztown have to take their timeouts, stop, stopping the clock with 36.9. In California, they want to tack on another touchdown. They don't care. They're ready to pound this thing in. Yeah, put this game out of reach to me, just for measure. Again, I, I wish I had a, a one of those watches that can track my heart rate because <laughs> it is through the roof right now. Oh. Man, what an exciting game. Opening day here for two? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it's been so long since we've done football. It's been almost a, um, a little less than a year since our last football game. And I think I was talking to Gary in the car yesterday whenever we were bringing all the equipment up here today. This was, I was so excited for this game. I was so excited to finally just get back in the swing of things. And I feel like football kind of really kicks that off. And I don't think there's any better way to start a game than like this. It looked so bleak for California for so long. Like I said, they didn't have a lead for 59 minutes of this game. They were tied for a little bit, but Kutztown had control of the lead for almost the entire game in California. And this offense, full of swagger, full of confidence, worked their way back on the field. Second and goal from the two. Man in motion to the near side. Black gets the snap, hands it off to McCann. McCann. Going to run into a wall. Going to get brought down for no gain. It's going to be another timeout taken by Kutztown. That's going to be their second. One more in the pocket of the Golden Bears. So California with one more chance to try to punch it in and put this game well and truly out of reach. And today we've seen some highs and we've seen some lows. And I think that's the beauty of football is, and I think the resilience of this Vulcan team cannot be questioned after today. We saw it a lot last year, too, where the offense especially started off pretty slow in the first half of games, but really picked it up, and the defense kind of held their own along the way. But they had their backs against the wall. It was looking grim. And I think one of the deciding plays, I think, is that we can point back to is the Kutztown decision to go for it on fourth down when they had the field goal that they probably could have taken. Yeah, yeah, and they would have needed this this touch on uh, to really uh, get up top. Well, I think if they would have kicked, made that field goal, it would have been they would have had 23 points, and they would have only needed a field goal on their last drive. They wouldn't have had to push it all the way down the field for a touchdown. And I think that is a decision that can be questioned, but the Vulcans not going to take anything away from that. They're going to take that every day of the week. 
Third down and two. Fakes the handoff. David or Black keeps a hold of it. Able to break away from one. Stiff arms him into the ground. And gonna fall forward for no gain, but Black just showing that he can do it all, man. He's just in this second half alone looks like a completely different quarterback. Yep. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> I didn't think I just thought I thought he was gonna be brought down there. It's that stiff arm. Great way to stay up. Even though it wasn't for any yardage, it was just a way to even get back to the line of scrimmage. It's 25 seconds exactly left on the clock. And I believe California is going to send out the field goal unit. Biko looking to make it a seven-point game. So Kutztown, if, if Biko is able to make it, Kutz, I mean, Kutztown need a touchdown regardless. But 25 seconds left in this game. No more timeouts. I think... I don't know any way. I have no idea how they're going to be able to do it, man. I, The only thing I can even remotely say could be anywhere close would be maybe some of the uh, the, the Chiefs against the Bills in the playoffs where they were able to drive down the field in 13 seconds. Yep. So if they, as I said, if Falcons defense gets, gets on the field, they definitely want to protect, protect deep and protect uh, – out of bounds to keep them in and keep that clock running. But the offense goes back out, fourth and three, handoff again to McCann, and McCann for the third time gets in. Third handoff inside of the goal line, and McCann brings it home and puts the game out of reach for California. I'm so happy. <laughs> I, my f I, I don't think I've had a smile on my face all game until right now. I am yeah. so happy. And like a great, good play, great play call, matter of fact, there by, by the Vulcans. Able to uh, capitalize on the uh, Kutztown. I'm guessing it's not nonchalantness, but uh, I guess it caught them sleeping. The kick is up, and the kick is good from Beatco. 31-20 the score. 20.9 seconds left. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back here on CTV, CTV Sports 1 and the PSAC Network. Multiple studies have shown that marijuana can slow both driver reaction and response time, which can be really dangerous. He's here. He's here. Wait, wait, wait. What? Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Adamson Stadium. The Vulcans come roaring back with a 31-20 lead. Beat Coast kick fielded at the 10-yard line by Lloyd. Lloyd trying to find a lane on the outside. Going to get brought down just past the 30-yard line, 14.9 left on the clock. We take a look at the replay of that touchdown one more time as McCann able to work his way in for the second touchdown. <laughs> Braxton's got the hat on. And <laughs> just what a performance here from Cal today. Ladies and gentlemen, the board do barn door has been shut. <laughs> has been shut. <laughs> the barn door has been shut. And California are going to start the season off with a win here at Adamson Stadium. Again, you could have not write you could not write a better story of this game if you tried. Uh, as you were saying earlier, great resilience. I'm telling you. Of any sport, any sport is about 30% physical and 70% mental. Great mental presence by Vulcans here. Novak back to pass. Pass is complete. Receiver is going to be able to get his way out of bounds for a first down. That was hasty on the grab. Going to get pushed out at the f around the 40-yard line. And I feel like they just right the wrongs that they did last season against Kutztown. They had a lot of control in that game, just like Kutztown had here today. But the Kutztown were able to capitalize on the Vulcan mistakes and were able to pull out the win last year. And now this year, I feel like it's kind of the opposite. The Vulcans 
were like down and out of it for so long. Kutztown had so much control, but the Vulcans were able to capitalize as the pass is complete and brought down out of bounds. Ravenel Jr. with the grab into Vulcan territory. And not much really else to say. I, it, yeah. There's, if you're Davis Black, you gotta be feeling great right now. You gotta be feeling on cloud nine to get your first win here as the starting quarterback for Cal. Yeah, first win of the first game of the season, first win of the season. We're able to work out the Kings card pretty quick so far. Of course, there's always room for improvement, but great first game here by the Vulcans. Final play, Novak back to pass, rolling, firing to his right pass, caught on the near side, forced out of bounds. And that's going to be the end of it here at Adamson Stadium. Your final score, California 31, Kutztown 20. Braxton, any final thoughts after today's game as Vulcans celebrating as they make their way on the field? Great job by the Vulcans today. Able to capitalize off of Kutztown. Any mistakes, able to able to uh, man, just fin uh, able to uh, minimize theirs and able to uh, finish this game out. Yeah, California, just do it all at the end of this game. Davis Black, soak it all in as you wrote yourself into Vulcan folklore as they are able to defeat the Golden Bears 31 to 20 here. The Vulcans starting off the season with a win from everyone here at CUTV, from our producer, Mr. Gary Smith, from my bra broadcast partner, Braxton Turner. My name is John Sape. Thank you all very much for watching this exciting game here at Adamson Stadium. Your final score, 31 to 20 from everyone here at CUTV. Thank you all very much for watching. Have a good night, California.